See the kind of authority I carry around here? I just speak it out and it pops on. <laughs> All right, and we're going to have a good night tonight. But a lot, I'm going to go through a lot of information here, so we'll hold the questions to the end. Okay, so try it. You know, make a mental note, and we'll uh, try and get through this material. Welcome to the YouTubers. I'll uh, make some quick announcements here. There's next month's seminar. Send me an email for a topic if you don't mind. Don't have one yet. Uh, I'm on the radio every day of the week, but next week I'm changing the schedule. So I'll give that to you next Friday. I'll have a new schedule for my radio programs. I'm always on the radio uh, on the website on omnifm.com. You can get archive radio programs there that go back several months. I'm on secular internet radio as well, Sunday nights at 9 o'clock on Dark Sky Radio. If you want to help us financially and you happen to shop off of Amazon, my wife uh, loves to shop on Amazon. She buys something every week on Amazon. Yeah. So now she puts in Smile Amazon and she put in our charity name. And uh, did, did my wife leave? She's not here, is she? All right. We put in our charity name and they will pay us if you uh, buy something off Amazon. Yeah, eventually everyone will be buying everything off of Amazon. Probably 10 years from now. Everybody will be on Amazon. Same thing with Good Search. If you put in our name and switch over from Google. Thank you. Tonight's uh, teaching will be on our House of Healing AZ YouTube teaching channel. You can look at it there if you happen to miss it tonight. Okay. We have some other uh, YouTube channels that have a lot of other teachings on. Those are the ones listed. Uh, please send me an email. If you'd like to get the miracle list or you can pick it up off the website, you can do self-deliverance at home. If you're a Christian who's mentally ill, you just follow the steps and uh, you can get delivered. You say, well, that's not going to work. True, it doesn't work if you don't do it. But if you go to the website and look at the testimonial page, you'll see all these people that sent me emails saying they got wonderful deliverance going through the list. Okay, so I know it works because <clears throat> the Holy Ghost works. Yeah, that's the that's the crux of it. All right, uh, YouTubers, remember your terror cell. I do a radio show on it next week. Okay, so you need to terrorize the devil in your mega church wherever you attend church. You open up a terror cell. You start picking off the sick people. Well, that doesn't work either. No, wrong, Einstein. I did it myself. It worked beautifully when I was attending a mega church. I don't recommend stuff that doesn't work. You know why? Because I'm not a phony rot gut TV preacher. Okay, this is the real world here, not the TV world. Oh, the donation boxes are on the doors there. And you're not allowed to leave. My wife is auditing the hall right now. There she is. I see her peeking around that corner. She'll be watching to see if you put anything in the boxes. She'll follow you home if you don't. Or you can donate on the website. Thank you. Tonight's teaching is based on uh, this book here, Atonement Healing. I break down every healing in the Bible, the New Testament, and I show you the root cause of it is it a demonic illness or is it a medical illness that's a great quick reference guide we'll be at the restoration of hope in LA and uh, at 2 o'clock on the 22nd that morning at 9 o'clock we'll be on Skid Row preaching to the homeless that is a very interesting service if you want to see some unusual things happen I would and you happen to know somebody out in L.A., well, I, would, I would go to that service, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's, it's wild. This is the greatest book ever written on divine healing. We sell it in the bookstore. By far the best book ever written by F.F. F. Bosworth. He and his brother used to tour the United States and Canada in the Roaring Twenties. 
they had so many people healed. It was unbelievable. This guy mentored Bill Branham before he before he cracked up. He was Bill Branham's mentor. Okay. All right. Any questions before we start? This is the Divine Healing se uh, Seminar. Obviously, nothing works with God unless you are willing to do two things. You have to believe it, and then you have to receive it. You can't just believe something's true up here. It won't do you a cotton-picking bit of good. You have to believe it and receive it. That's the only way the gospel will work. The gospel works every time if you believe it and receive it. It doesn't work at all if you're not able to do the one of both of those things. Okay? Jesus said the people get their hearts glossed over. Paul called it seared. Their eyes are dull of dull. Their, their ears can't see. Their eyes can't hear, he said. And if they would hear and they would see, he said, and understand with their heart and be confer converted, I would heal them. Now, that's an interesting process there. You must hear God's word. You must believe it. You must receive it. Receiving it requires you to understand it. If you do not do those things, you cannot get healed. Healing doesn't work. <clears throat> Luke chapter 5. Jesus became famous because of his incredible anointing of the Holy Ghost. He had the Spirit of God, John chapter 3, without measure. No one has ever had the Holy Ghost without measure. No one ever will. He was unique in that regard, but you don't need the Holy Ghost without measure to get healed. We've had uh, several thousand people delivered from demons here. I don't have the Holy Ghost without measure. It's not, it's not even close. It was good for a few thousand. This thing on? I don't have the Holy Ghost without measure, not even close. We've had hundreds of people healed here over the years. You know, has every person been healed? No, we don't have the Holy Ghost without measure here, so everybody doesn't get healed. But in the New Testament, as you know, everybody that wanted to get healed got healed. Everybody did. 100%. Why? They believed it. And they received it in the parable of the sower how many ground were there four and how many ground flopped three out of four correct hey that's two-thirds or that's three-fourths isn't it that's terrible in America, it's got to be up to 90 some percent at least. Listen, that's how the gospel works. Here's the good news boom, the atonement paid for your healing and your deliverance, your gifts, your anointing you name it, your eternal life and glory all paid for in the atonement. But very few people believe it, very few people receive it. Jesus said, The gate is. Wide and most people go through that gate <clears throat> The gate to glory is Narrow and Jesus said few people go through that gate Why do they do that because God told these people to go through and those no he left it all up to you You decide which gate you go through you decide what you get from God This thing's your call. You make the call. You ever watched that years ago? Nobody, that, nobody that old. You used to be able. To, it was a football show. They showed you the play, and then they stopped the film there. You never saw that. And then it said, "You make the call." 
Well, that's the gospel of God. Here's the gospel. It's all there for you. You make the call. You decide if you're going to believe it and receive it. God left it up to us. So on judgment day, you're not sitting there going, well, you screwed me over. You screwed me. You, 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 you. Yeah, you ever heard that? Never been married. If you're married, you get that. You, 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 you. There's no you, you, use on judgment day. You had a choice to change. And God left it up to you. And you make the call. You decide. Is there a bunch of heathen here tonight? I'm starting to get a little scared. Well, three out of four make the call no. One out of four in the parable of sower make the call yes. You make the call. Well, that was a short section. Is that encouraging? Yeah. My wife's happy. It was short. In, a, in order to understand divine healing, you must understand what causes sicknesses and illnesses, and you will never understand that until you understand Satan's incredible power. Let's take a quick look at it. It's illustrated quickly in Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, and here's a quick illustration for you. In Job 1 and 2, the Bible specifically says, Satan caused murder. It says he controlled the weather. Okay? It says he caused criminals to steal stuff. In our society today, it is still exactly the same. Satan and sin causes people to murder other people and steal stuff from other people. Satan can still control the weather using tornadoes and different things to kill people and murder people and so on Does it all the time According to job 1 and 2 Satan killed job's family with a tornado He was controlling the weather It says Satan made job sick that is exactly what goes on now. Demons can make people sick, or if the demons don't make them sick, they can exacerbate an illness and make it worse. So the person could get sick from natural means or a traumatic mean, but after they're hurt, spirits can exacerbate things, or they're also capable of blocking somebody from getting healed after they get injured. So if the demons don't cause something, they can make it worse. If they don't cause it and they're not making it worse, it's getting worse on its own, they can block you from believing and receiving your healing from God. So sicknesses, in some manner or respect, always have some kind of a demonic element to it. They're either blocking it, causing it, or making it worse. They're trying to jack you up, coming in and going out. If they can't get you coming in, they'll get you going out. They do anything and everything they can to keep you from getting healed. You know why? Because you're not healed causes enormous discouragement. The Bible says that Satan left some people in Job's life who could hurt him. Friends and a spouse. You notice the spouse wasn't killed. Why wasn't she killed? Duh. She made him feel worse. His three friends weren't killed. They could have been killed. Nope. The devil left three friends there to hurt him. Okay? Do yourself a favor. Get rid of the idiots in your life. Dump people in your life who cause you to sin or cause you to drift away from God's word. Get rid of them. Yes. Bag them. Yes. Bag them. They're sent to you to cause you to lose your faith, compromise your faith, dip into sin, step over the line. The devil sent you these losers to turn you into a loser, and you will become a loser 
if you hang around losers rocky balboa preached the gospel in the movie rocky one hey yo you hang around coconuts what do you get you get coconuts <laughs> i don't believe this this guy's quoting rocky listen i'll quote anybody I can to make, get a truth across to you. I don't care who the idiot is. Get these people out of your life. Brother Mike, I'm married to them. Okay, now that's a different thing. It requires different <laughs> techniques. Again, not recommending matricide or anything of that nature. Don't send me an email. <laughs> but sinful friends or compromising Christians or carnal Christian friends, you don't need. Get rid of them. Dump them. You'll be saving yourself a life of misery. These three friends tormented Job. They beat the stuffing out of this poor guy. Mentally, mentally they got to him. They didn't physically attack him. They got him here. They caused Job to crash. Hello? In that story, the bet was that Job would curse God to his face, and he didn't. He blessed the Lord. Okay, he passed that test, but from there on, he failed every other test. One of the reasons he failed all of his tests was because he had his friends with him, and his wife came to him. He says, hey, you sound like you're out of your mind like the other women. Well, she was. She was overcome with grief, and when you're under pressure and grief and sorrow and sadness, hey, you do things you wouldn't normally do. You think things you wouldn't normally think. Okay, I understand what was going on with her. She was hurt. She was wounded. Okay? But his three friends stayed around, and they drug him down. He lost his mind listening to his three friends. These weren't his enemies. No, the enemies had stolen everything he had and killed his family. They were gone. See, but the devil will bring somebody in your life who looks like a friend. To trash you up one side and down the other. I'm telling you, it will happen. Get rid of them. Jehovah in chapter 40 came to Job and straightened the poor guy out. Did you see that? He appeared to him out of a whirlwind. That was a whirlwind. He asked him a series of questions he couldn't answer, the poor guy. Why? He'd been listening to his friends. Half the crap that came out of his mouth was stimulated by three friends who were trying to help him get rid of these stinking helpers they're not going to do you any good they're going to cause you to doubt they're going to give you unbelief they're going to cause you to dip into sin or compromise your faith here's what you need to do in the name of Jesus there they go grunt and flush get rid of them but we grew up together. Hey, there's all kinds of people in hell right now who grew up with other people in hell. Bag them! <laughs> well, you don't talk like the Calvary Chapel pastor. Hey, Jack, A, I'm not a pastor, and B, you're not at Calvary Chapel. <laughs> Here it is, the great power of Satan. Oh, you're glorifying Satan. No, I'm about to screw him over bad tonight. <laughs> But if you don't understand what he can do, he will nail you. He lies, he cheats, he fights dirty. And here is this power, and God gave us this glorious story in Job to show us what can happen when you're spiritually ignorant like Job. You say, well, that's insulting, I'm a pastor. No. Job was a great prophet and a great man of God. He held up under pressure I couldn't even imagine. He was way beyond me. But he was wrong. He said, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. The Lord never took any of that stuff. He couldn't see behind the curtain. But now you have no excuse. We have the God's word. We know what happened. You know what the devil's doing, and you are without excuse. We are not ignorant of his devices. Methodius is the Greek word. It means his methods, his moves. See? Hello? Bobby Fisher was mentally ill. 
probably never even heard of him. He was the greatest chess player that ever lived. The guy was barnyard crazy. I think he's still lost. He ran away one day and no one ever found him again. Probably moved over to the city dump. This guy had an IQ that was off the charts spectacular. He was a chess player beyond belief. He was the Muhammad Ali of chess. Never heard of him? Well, this guy, you ought to watch that movie, Bobby Fisher. Your mouth will be like on the floor the whole way through it. The guy was massively, massively crazy. Even if you have a huge IQ like Bobby Fisher, if you don't understand the spirit world, you'll end up lost somewhere. No one will ever see you again. The guy died with no friends, no money, no nothing. Why? You got to get rid of these people who put these negative thoughts in your mind, who put unbelief in your mind, who say negative things all the time. They're going to block your healing and your anointing and your ministry and your giftings. My God, do something about it. Well, I got sidetracked there. Apologize for that. Now, here's Satan, and it shows there clearly what he can do. Job 17. Where are you going? The Jehovah said to Satan. Hey, I'm going to and fro all over the earth. What a, re what a revelation that is. He is the God of this world. He actually runs the whole planet. <clears throat> Have you considered my servant Job? Sumleb is the Hebrew phrase. It means, I see you've got your eye on my servant Job. Well, he had targeted Job for termination, and Jehovah saw that. So he stepped in with this incredible story. He goaded Satan into a bet. He lost both bets. But the most important thing was he gave us this book to save our lives. And 3,500 years later, we have the book of Job, and it is loaded with spiritual benefits you can't believe nor conceive. And that's what Jehovah was doing in this boil incident. Okay? Let's skip that. That's why we have that book. How'd that section go? Yeah. All right. Now, when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to healing or deliverance or anything from God, you got to understand something. God is a good person. He's a good person genetically. Uh, his DNA, if he has any, it's good. His personality is good. His, what kind of a person he is, is good. His character is good. His integrity is good. He's a good person. He's a wonderful person. Uh, he's not a horse's patoot. He's, he's not a human. Uh, he doesn't have unreasonable expectations. He doesn't get mad all the time. He's a wonderful person. And he's addicted to giving. He wants to give and help people. Well, that doesn't make any sense, Mike. That's nuts. 90% of the Christians in America are sick. If he wants to help somebody, why didn't he heal them? He wants to help them the way he wants to. And that is through believing and receiving. Okay? He doesn't just throw out salvation. There you go. You guys are all saved. So are you. And it, Wow, how about you two? No. Whosoever will may come and drink of the water... Father set up this system of faith and believing and receiving, and it doesn't work any other way. So Christianity doesn't work in America because we're not doing it the way Father set the system up. You've got to understand and believe that God's a good person and he likes certain things just like you. He don't like certain things just like you. Matthew 18. It is not the thelema. Thelema is when you sit down and you think about something and decide, yeah, I'd like to do it that way. Would you like to go on a cruise or a trip to Disneyland? Let me think about that. Disneyland. Thelema. Jehovah sat down and said, I would really like to see all these people healed. 
I thought about it and I that's what I decided it Is not the will of God that any of these little ones should perish Not one if somebody goes to hell they went there against father's wishes No one goes to hell Because God said you know what I'm, I'm not in the mood for you You know what hey come here for a minute Boop. Oh look at him he went over the cliff Oh, he's in the pit screaming that never happens It never happens people go to hell because They chose to go to hell God doesn't want to lose anybody Okay, all your relatives are loved by God second Peter 3 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise He is long-suffering toward us. That means he's patient not Willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance first Timothy chapter 2 for God phalo that means wants to God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That includes the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, whores, gang gangsters, rap artists. Oh my gosh. Religious people, they're the worst. Oh God, politicians. <laughs> we look at certain people and vomit. Father looks at him and says, I want that person. Wipe the vomit off of it. Hello? He wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge that, Why because he's a good person. He, he's he, he's a lover. He likes people. He likes you. He wants to be with you Yeah, you say well nobody else does yeah, I know that <laughs> I know several of you and I know why but father doesn't look at you like others look at you He doesn't see you like other people see you right. Right. He sees through different eyes divine eyes What did Jesus come to do? Here it is. Job, to destroy the Kratos, the dominion. Death, people die all the time, every day, every second, every moment. Millions, thousands, tens of, whatever it is. It's all because Satan owns the planet. He runs the whole planet. He runs it because we allow him to run it. He lost the deed to the planet at Calvary. He lost the deed, but you know what he is? He's a tenant that won't move out. Right. The lease expired. The tenant is to move out. He won't move out. If you live in uh, South Dakota, if you live in California, if you live in some state that has very poor landlord tenant act and landlord laws, somebody moves into your house, you can't get them out of your house. Right. It's almost impossible. They don't pay the rent. It doesn't matter. The government's on the side of the tenant. The tenant burns down the house, brings in farm animals. They mate and rape and poop all over. The government doesn't do it. You can't get them evicted. In Arizona, not that way. Hey, you screw up in a unit here. You got about three weeks left. You got the dope. Hello? If you've been evicted, please don't raise your hands. <laughs> Satan was evicted at Calvary, but he won't move out until you decide to move him out right. Well, why doesn't God do it? I just got through explaining it to you father set the system up the way he wanted it set up That's how the system runs you receive it and you believe it You use your authority and your faith to remove the devil from your life because he has no deed to you anymore He does not own you anymore. He only Ruins your life by your permission and allowing him to do it He got stripped on the cross of Calvary Colossians says there was a parade in glory after Jesus rose from the dead celebrating what? The dominion of Satan was broken What did he come to do to deliver us who had been in what bondage slavery to death? Eternal death hell physical death and eternal death It's like being a slave first John chapter 3 this for this purpose Was the son of God manifested to luo unchain? unloose 
the works of the devil all sickness in some little respect is related to demons they've got their fingers stuck somewhere if they didn't cause it they're making it worse they're always nitpicking around finding something to ruin and finding some way to jack somebody up not anymore you're going to use your authority yes. and you're going to yes. superman it yes. seen that movie <laughs> yeah when I was a kid I used to watch Superman what was the guy's name his name was Steve Reeves I believe what was his first name there was a couple different Reeves but anyway this one of Christopher Reeve no that's the other one Steve Reeves I think was the one when I was a kid and Superman used to wear the Superman outfit and I love that outfit how I dreamed I dreamed of being Superman uh, my parents were nuts and they were drunks and I wanted to get that suit so I could fly out of that family over to a decent one <laughs> I never got that outfit but he had a big old s on his chest and he'd fly out the window you know and sometimes you see the wires it was great <laughs> this was pre uh, Steven Spielberg pre Spielberg you could you see somebody flying you could see the wires happening but you put it out of your mind you went with it I went with it I just believed you could fly see I believed it and I received it you can do that with the truth you can also do it with a delusion I was doing it with my Superman delusion I wanted to be Superman and they would chain that dude up they chain him up they tie him up he just luo bang break him Yes. I'm the only old person here. Okay. Well, anyway, he used to bang. He'd break his way out of it. Right on TV. 1956. What's that mean? Luo. That means to un unchain the person, untie that person, loose them, and let them go. That's what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He went to preach the Uangelion. Good news. See, God's a good person. Healing and deliverance and all these things are part of the atonement. This is a good news venture not a like politics where everything is bad news It's good news here What is part of the good news healing healing is part of the good news delivered he sent me to heal Heal what first the most important thing your physical illness. No your emotional illness is most important to God You're healing your heart is what he goes after first he uses physical healing to get to somebody's heart and heal their heart healing of the heart is more important than physical healing the heart is the most important thing man looks on the outward appearance God looks on the that's why this is mentioned first by the great prophet Isaiah people are emotionally broken and shattered because of a lifetime of chronic disappointments yes. the biggest disappointments the parents then the siblings then its spouses then its jobs never stops in America something's always disappointing you well you can't live a life of disappointment it's impossible you got to make up for it somehow so you start using that's when the devil sends you vices to make you feel better People don't drink because they want to drink. They drink because there's a reason they're drinking. They're drunk for a reason. They're coked up for a reason. Why? Something's wrong with their soul. Their heart is broken. Centribal, shattered. Yeah. Their faith is shattered. Their hearts are shattered. Their hopes are shattered. Something's broken inside. And that was the first thing Yahweh sent the Messiah to heal was people who had shattered broken hearts because he knew that was more important than physical healing I know that just sounds weird but it isn't believe it or not heart pain and soul pain hurts worse than physical pain it actually does it's more painful and to what Ephesus to set people free you're free to go that's what they're doing right now the government they're getting ready to sign a bill for prison reform you seen that on TV what are they gonna do uh, they're gonna let a bunch of people out of prison who are currently in prison what are they doing Ephesus hey you nonviolent offenders go 
go Don't 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 move in my neighborhood, but go <laughs> Is what the politicians say oh they want everybody free as long as they don't have to do it There you go He wants to recover the sight to the blind that's physical and spiritual That's that's discernment and to what same Greek word freedom to set at liberty Ephesus those who are bruised What's he talking about? Emotional pain of the soul is where the Messiah does his greatest work in here. People are addicts because of something hurting in here. People get divorced because something in here. People get sick because of something in here. Doctors have proven through scientific Research many illnesses are caused by emotional roots Almost all gut problems are You ever heard of irritable bowel syndrome? <laughs> oh, geez. Oh god. Oh. What's wrong with you? I oh. I know you you're bitter against your mother uh, You you hate your third husband uh, Your both your kids abandon you and you're heartbroken over that. I know exactly why you got irritable bowel syndrome. Hello? I know why you got ulcers. I mean, we could go down the list. It's all emotionally related illnesses. Freedom for you tonight. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with what? Now, here's your breakdown. And here's the reason people flock to faith healers. Every born-again Christian every single one 100% has the Holy Ghost every one of them Amen. Every single one of them whether they speak in tongues or not whether they have any spiritual gifts It doesn't matter if you're born again by definition You have the Holy Ghost, but that's not good enough Well, that's blasphemy no having the Holy Ghost every Christian has but not every Christian can master the power of the Holy Ghost in fact only a small percentage of Christians use his power Jesus had both the full anointing of the Holy Ghost at maximum level and he tapped into all of the Holy Ghost's incredible power which is which is literally limitless he pops up in Genesis in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth and then the heavens the earth became uh, void and dumped on and rotten and trashed and then it says the Holy Ghost moved over the waters can you imagine that how does he do it I don't have any idea who cares just let's figure out how to get him to do it that's all I care about I don't have to have all the details Faith doesn't require you to have all the details. That's the subject of faith faith is believing when you don't understand Faith is believing when you don't see faith is believing when no one's there That's right now I'm starting to sound like Calvary teacher That's right. Yeah, I got a mix going That's what my wife calls it. it's a mix Not in this context he went about doing what there it is again good. Don't you get it father's a good person. He's a good God God's a good God And he's genetically good. He don't know how to be anything else. He doesn't get it Healing all that were what oh my gosh welcome to America Kata Duna stool dominated by Satan If you're living a life of sickness and spiritual failure and brokenheartedness Trust me, it's not all your fault. Satan's dominating people. He dominates them. He turns them into addicts. He turns them into losers. He bankrupts them. He steals their houses. He breaks up their families. He's dominating America. He's dominating the planet. Hell has broken out everywhere. What's Satan want to do? That's his number one hobby. He's a control freak. He wants to be in control. He wants to dominate people. 
He wants to force them to obey. He wants to push them and goad them to do what he wants done. Yeah. Yep. That's how he operates. Yep. Yeah. You exercise your faith, you believe and receive. He gets his butt kicked. Mm-hmm. Period. <laughs> Well, that section's over fast. <laughs> Good? Yeah. These, these sections are going quickly. This is great. How about section four then? Okay. Always remember that as you scan through the text, and the text is the most important thing, the New Testament text is the most important thing, you always notice a pattern. You look for patterns. You look for systems. Okay? You're looking for a pattern in there, see? And this pattern, you'll see it constantly. Jesus didn't bifurcate healing and deliverance. To him, they all went together. And if you'll read the text carefully and slowly, you'll catch a pattern there. I did, and I was amazed when I first saw it years ago. They brought all the sick people that were taken with divers, what? Okay, this is uh, Matthew 4, right? This is Matthew 4. Yeah. It says sick. They, t- they brought Jesus all the sick people for obvious reasons. And here's what's in that verse. And now if you break it down, I broke it down like that so you could study it later. I'm not going to go through it. But he, the, the Holy Spirit was kind of listing, listing different types of things that were wrong with people here. And, and as you notice, uh, some of them were... Daimonizomai, demonized, being tormented by demons. Number two is tormented. Uh, that's being tortured by demons. Tortured by chronic pain. Uh, tortured by terminal illnesses. Uh, that de- the demons have something to do with them. Either they cause it or they're making it worse. Or they're preventing you from getting it healed. They're doing something in that system. Okay? Seleniazomai, people who had... Greek word means to be moonstruck. In, in, in ancient times, if you were crazy, uh, they thought it was related to a full moon. And so they called them, you were moonstruck. See? And then years later, back in the 70s, the moonies came along. And, and then we had, to, we had to watch ourselves after that. So then you got paraluticus is spinal cord injuries. Quadriplegia, paraplegia. And uh, it says he healed them all. Notice he healed them. So some of these things were medically related, and some of the things were demonically related. You have to figure out each person separately, if you can, and determine if it's a demonic illness, daimonizomai, or if it's a medical illness, gnosis, or a sickness, or illness, or it could be a trauma. When evening came, they brought many who were possessed with devils. That's the Greek phrase, daimonizomai. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. So I noticed, I went through the text and looked at every mass healing revival Jesus had. And I noticed that the deliverance and the healing always went together. He never split it up. So that's what I tried to do when I started the House of Healing years ago. I said, hey, we can't just do healing all the time. It's not going to work. We can't just do deliverance all the time. That's not going to work. This thing's going to fail. I said, we got to mix it up, see? It's like a big league pitcher. You can't throw fastballs more than two or three innings. You're going to get shelled. All they got to do is get the timing right, and bang, they're knocking it over the fence. You, got, you need a, 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 a curveball. You need a change-up. You got to keep the batter guessing. You got to keep them off balance. Right. Hello? Yeah. Uh, so, I realized, hey, you can't just do one thing. See, Billy Graham was a wonderful person. What was the problem there? He just did one thing. Salvation. Okay? Then he had all these backsliders. You can't just do one thing. The gospel of God covers everything. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right, sir. All were sick. Cast them out. All that were sick. You notice that? It said sick. Cast out the spirits and healed all that were sick. Demons cause illnesses. Duh. And then he quotes this. 
Isaiah 53 He took our asthenia weaknesses and healed our nausea, our, our illnesses our sicknesses okay? That's all covered in the atonement That's a short section. I like short sections. Oh good <laughs> Section five. Let's hope this is short All right now, let's start breaking this down real quick uh, some illnesses are medical some of them are demonic Jesus if you break it down One-third of his healings in the New Testament were demonic two-thirds were medical Okay, well, let's go to the one-third then You have to have discernment of spirits, okay now this gift gets a lot of bad press because these kooky church prophets Everybody thinks they're a prophet now Oh God And the reason they think they're prophets is because They've got this deep-seated seed of low self-esteem in their soul So my god if I don't have a name Tagged to me then that reduces my value. Okay, which is a delusion the fact that you are a child of God is the only value you will ever need. Amen. You don't have to have a title. I'm a prophet. Well, these uh, kooky church prophets run around giving people words. <laughs> prophets give words. And it is a sucking disaster. They're wrong so often you can't conceive or believe it. And so many people are hurt by prophets. <laughs> They're just killing us because they said I've got discernment That's not the gift. The gift is not discernment. There's no discernment gift Okay, that's someone discernment is something every Christian has to a greater or lesser degree Because they have the Holy Ghost Discerning of spirits is a separate distinct gift of the Holy Spirit and one of the nine gifts in Corinthians See the difference so they're running around the church as a prophet because they have discernment oh geez keep spinning it because you're gonna get in lots of trouble with a prophet at your church who has discernment okay here what do you need to do grunt hard boom flush it flush it you want some discernment? I'll give you some discernment. I got some scriptures here for you tonight that will give you discernment that will blow your mind. Yeah. You want discernment? Do you? You stick with me. Yeah. I'm not a prophet, but I'll give you some discernment. Okay, there it is. Discernment of spirit. Jesus had that gift running at full bore, so to speak. Now let's take a quick look at a couple of illnesses. And see if we can break them down because they're fascinating uh, Matthew 15 mark 7 here. It is the woman from Syria. You've all read this story But there's a lot in the story you don't know about Crowgazo means to Cradzo uh, means to yell Crowgazo means to yell like crazy Okay, so and everybody who's married knows what I'm talking about You have an argument that goes to here there's some yelling then you have an argument that goes here We're, we're looking at divorce here crowd godzo Cradzo, no divorce that that's That's a wedding night sometimes <laughs> What that's not this woman was yelling and then she was yelling on top of it Why because she was mad because she was an idiot. No, she was in love with her daughter and she was desperate for a miracle from God. Those kind of people in the Bible were healed 100% of the time. Casual approachers usually received nothing. So this woman's pushing her way through, crowd God. So we know she's yelling and yelling loud and yelling where she was going to become annoying. She was yelling for mercy there. She says, My daughter is Kakos. Daimonizumai, she was very badly demonized. She was being tortured by a devil, or the Greek word is daimonian, demon. 
Okay, so we know this is a demonic illness Well, we don't have all the medical details, but we don't need them Jesus said Oh boy Jesus didn't say anything to her well, she's yelling so loud and she keeps yelling louder the disciples come to him and say get rid of her She's on nagging it. She's on our nerves. See a translation here. She's on my last nerve <laughs> They want her out Okay, and Jesus said To the woman I have been sent to Jews and the nation of Israel I'm not sent to the Gentiles yet. You're ahead of the schedule here my clicker screwing up. I apologize. So then she doesn't take no for an answer. Why? Love. Love pushes you to do things you would not normally do. Love will push you places you would never go. She began worshiping him. Now she's working into the Lord's heart and she's trying to box him into a corner and it works. See? The Holy Ghost loves when you're worshiping. Oh, that draws his attention. He he leans on over. See? While you're griping and moaning and bitching and yakking and nah, giving a prophetic word, you're gonna die. While you're doing that crap, the spirit of the Lord kind of drifts back and you know, he's not yelling at you or hating you, he just kind of grieving, grieving a bit and he just kind of steps back. That's when you're complaining and you're doing that stuff. Worshiping. No, the Syrian woman, she was thinking about this. See, she was ahead of the disciples. Yes, yes, yes. She didn't have any Jewish training at all and was ahead of the disciples. Yes. Desperate people are ahead of people at Bible college and seminary. On, They're ahead of them. Yes, see, the seminary people read about miracles, desperate people get miracles. Yeah. He said, hey, Lord, glory to your holy name. Praise you, Jesus, Son of God. Glory to your name. That's some good praise in there. That's right. I ought to open a praise school. I guess I won't then. Lord, help me, she says. He says, listen, deliverance isn't for sinners. It's for Christians. It's the children's bread. Oh, we don't follow, throw it. To the Kunarian puppies. We don't just throw it down and let puppies eat it. And then she says, True Lord, but the Kunarian, the puppies eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Once again, she wouldn't take no for an answer. See, if you're truly looking for a miracle from God, you're not going to take no tonight. If you've been to Bible college or you've been talking to somebody from a seminary, you can theorize how you can take no for an answer and then you'll leave with nothing But if you're like this gal no No She wouldn't take no for an answer. Why love? Love what is deliverance? It's it's the children's bread It's the children's bread. We have had so many people's lives changed here. You wouldn't believe it so so different so happy so every it's amazing when you get the devil out of your face Jesus said woman your faith is great notice he didn't say it to any of the disciples Therefore same Greek word we saw ten slides back they low you get it honey the way you want it See, she didn't have all this theology clogging up her faith. See? Much study is a weariness of the flesh. You can have too much Christianity in your head and end up bankrupt. Amen. You ever met a Bible thumping imbecile? Yeah. <laughs> God, they're quoting scripture left and right. They got all kinds of bondages in their lives. They don't have any common sense. Can't hold down a job. They can quote scripture all the way from one job to the other one. They're quoting scripture when they get fired on this one to get hired on that one. You ever met somebody who was so heavenly minded they were no earthly good? Don't point at anybody. 
Well, that's what these disciples were. They had their heads stuck up. This woman didn't have all that training and teaching to block her faith. Don't you get it? She came in desperate for a miracle from God. She's going to yell at him, then she's going to yell louder. Then the disciples told her to get lost. She wouldn't take no there. Jesus told her, no, I don't do that. She wouldn't take no there. Then she came back with a load of worship. Oh, that was getting to the Lord there. He was starting. She was buttering him up there. She was loosening him up. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's like, she was like Joe Lewis. You ever heard of him? Great fighter from Chicago. He said, you kill the body and the head will fall. She went right after Jesus' body, working on his heart, knowing that compassion was in there. She knew God was a good God. She knew he had character and integrity. She knew it was in there. All she had to do was work in and get some body work in. She cranked up some praise. Oh, Lord Jesus, starting to melt there. <laughs> yeah, then she was stepping out in her faith. Oh, Jesus, melting some more. Yeah, the Syrian work woman worked over the Lord. You're going to do it tonight too, friend. And then you know what you're going to get? You're going to get it the way you want it. They low. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The Bible says she went home, and guess what? The demons had Balo thrown her on the bed. Yep, that's what demons do. They lose, they pitch a little fit, and then they leave. That's what they'll do tonight. You'll have somebody screaming over here, and they'll leave happy. They pitch a little fit and then they go. Yeah, they're pitching a fit and then they go because you're going to make them go. Okay, let's check this one out. Here's another demonic illness. Ready? Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. There she is. This woman has a spirit of asthenia, feebleness or weakness. She had it for 18 years. She was soon cooped all. She was all bent forward like the hunchback in Notre Dame. Jesus said, woman, you are loosed. Apoluo means to be completely loosed. If you go to the doctor and you've got several illnesses, they'll try to treat all of them, but have you ever noticed the doctors always screw up some of them? But they'll get lucky and hit one or two. So they were loosed from this, but they're still in bondage with that one, right? Uh, my blood pressure evened out, but my arthritis got worse, so to speak. Apoluo means all of them are gone. All of them are loosed. Okay? All of them were loosed. You are completely released from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and she was healed. Okay? So you look, for, you look for patterns in the text again, sequences in the text. Sometimes Jesus spoke to the sickness, and it left. He spoke to the demon and went out. Sometimes he laid his hands on him. The sickness healed. Sometimes he laid his hand on the demon and flew out. What was he doing there? I think he was doing it to show us there's no, there's no set pattern for ministering in the spirit. You work it out with the Holy Ghost. If you like to do it this way and you feel more comfortable with that, that's fine. You like to do it this way, you feel more comfortable with that, do it that way. But if you think you got all the answers, then you're a, a prophet. <laughs> you see, then you're gonna then you're gonna try to impose a strict procedure, legalism, denominationalism. You're gonna do a bunch of spiritual crap. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's Arabic. <laughs> yes, sir. So, if you want to lay hands on something, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. Hey, work it out. You you and the Lord work it out. But faith is something you have to have. If you don't have faith, none of these techniques worth. Ask the Catholics. <laughs> one massive ritual after the other one at massive outfit after the other cone heads parades robes shawls buttons click it dude stop it this sounds like a rotten sermon it's actually good preaching that sounds bad sounds real bad that's what she had there she might have had kyphosis. That's that illness where the spine buckles forward. And it was caused by a spirit. That's my point I'm trying to make here. It was spiritually related. Scoliosis is also spiritually related. We've had a few of those healed here. Boop, the spine just loosens up. It's really great to see that. Rheumatoid arthritis is demonic. It's all caused by soul wounds. 
deep-seated bitterness, uh, usually trails back to childhood. Uh, it can also be a generational curse. Here's an infant that has rheumatoid arthritis. That's demons coming down from the family tree, witchcraft, sorcery, incest up there somewhere, something bad going on. They come down, bang, hit the kid in the womb. Happens a lot. Jesus said, should not this woman uh, who is bound by Satan, see, it wasn't a medical condition. It looked like a medical condition, but it had a spiritual root. Luke chapter 9. Now here's the other one. I, I just took two of them. Master, uh, he said, Didascalos is a teacher. This guy didn't know who Jesus was. He just heard some things about him. So he comes to him. He thinks he's some Jewish teacher. So he said, hey, teacher, I brought my son. Uh, he's my only child. He's severely disabled. I brought him to your disciples. Uh, they couldn't cast him out. It says, a spirit takes him. Well, back in those days, they weren't ignorant like we are now. Everybody knew about spirits back in the day. Yeah. We think they're just like ghosts or things, and it's just something on TV or in a movie. Back then, they knew they were real. Jews knew spirits were real. And uh, it says the Kradzo screams. And uh, Sparasso has seizures. He foams at the mouth. Uh, Suntribo, he's thrown around. He's shattered, emotionally shattered. Uh, it never leaves him alone. In other words, the condition was chronic. Right? Wherever he takes him. See, this father knew it was a spirit, and it was a male spirit. The thing was probably talking to him. And he tears him, regmi. He's breaking his bones. He's getting fractures, hairline fractures, comminuted fractures. He foams and he treats out, grinds his teeth in pain. That's what people do that have chronic pain. They, oh, God, that hurts. Oh, ow. And he, uh, ex he he's anorexic is where we get our English word, anorexic. He, got, he doesn't eat properly. His diet's terrible. He's wasting away. He's paper thin. He's skinny as a rail. He's dying in front of our eyes. And it's my only child. And Okay, <laughs> boy, the, the demons are they've had it with this teaching. <laughs> Hell, well, screw them. I spoke to your disciples, and they couldn't cast him out. Okay, and the reason they couldn't cast him out is because they were having a board meeting over it. The rest of the text I didn't put up there, but anyway, it says the scribes were there. And they were arguing with the scribes about this kid's demons. See, Jews had exorcism methods. Almost all religions have methods of exorcism. And uh, most of them have potions and lotions and rituals and procedures and things you uh, read or speak out, different things like that. You know, did you ever see the movie Exorcist? Yeah. Okay, the, the Catholic priest comes over and he's an expert and so he goes through a ritual Right you kiss this thing you put oil out then you get some water uh, Then you do this then you say this then you speak that out you read that and you go through it's in the manual You read it out of the manual and the Jews were the same way they had these procedures that they went through to exercise somebody and the disciples weren't using that Jesus had taught them to use their faith and speak to the spirits and Believe and receive and cast them out Cast them out with his word cast them out by driving them out. They were using a different method So what was happening there was the scribes were hacked off because they weren't using our method See people get mad at you when you don't use their method I got reamed out by a deliverance minister one time. He said, how come you don't take the Bible and stick it in their chest? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I, I'm sure it works, but it's just not how we do it. Jesus was speaking directly to you. Listen, it's not your method that you use. The demons, they like methods. Because if they get you to trip up on your method, they can beat you. They like procedures. 
They like rituals. Oh, you can't cast me out. Why not? Well, you didn't read that. Oh, just forgot to read that. <laughs> then you read that. Oh, the Lord is thou the thing. Oh, hi. come on out. Oh, you forgot something else. What was that? You didn't pray over that holy water. Oh, boom, boom. oh I thought somebody else did. Oh, gosh. Boy. See, if you think you got to go through a procedure to beat the devil, he'll nitpick your procedure, causing you doubt he gets to stay. If you come at the devil with the simple gospel of Christ and say, hey, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, hey, boy, you can shut up now because you were dethroned at Calvary. You don't have any authority in here now. I'm quite sick of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, get out of here! So they're having a fight over procedures. As soon as you get into a church situation where you're fighting over procedures and doctrines and theology, the anointing poof, blows right out the door. You can almost hear the Holy Ghost moving from the window. <laughs> out the door. See, he's looking for your faith. He's looking for sincerity. He's looking for integrity. He's looking for somebody that's got some, it's got a little spiritual guts. And the demons are too. And they know people who don't have it. They know if you ain't got it. Yeah. What was the problem? Arguing over the procedures of deliverance or healing or anything else will cause you to lose your faith. They had lost their faith. They began to doubt. Jesus said, you're faithless generation. What am I going to do with you? And when he saw Jesus, who, the pastor of the synagogue? No, the demon saw Jesus. Oh, now, now, the, now the demon recognizes somebody who's not going to argue over deliverance. They looked over there, oh, holy crap. I got some bad problems now. He's not going to get sucked into a debate on how to get me out of here. So the demon goes, I better draw these crowds in and cause a ruckus and get everybody jacked up and cause confusion because demons live in a world of confusion but it's not confusion to them it's only confusion to us yes. they live in a world of confusion they feel perfectly comfortable in a world of confusion they like it so they pitch a fit and he sends the boy into a seizure and throws him on the ground Coolio, he's he's spinning around with a grand mal seizure in front of everybody trying to show everybody around hey this Jesus guy is as big a goof as the other nine see hello he's trying to bootleg this incompetence onto this he's trying to cause it a distraction and Jesus says to the father Check this out How long has this been going on a pideothan is an infant So this demon did not get in this child through any sin of the child children are not at fault babies are certainly not at fault for crying out loud and He was hit by a generational spirit that came down through the family tree and it says that Balo throws him and tries to kill him by drowning him and burning him alive. Yeah. And it says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. So here you see, in some cases, you're going to have to work on the doubt and unbelief of the family first, in particular the parents. Because the parents have authority over the children. And if the parents don't believe, and they're living in sin, it's going to be difficult to get the kid free. See, you can ask Karina during the summer we have our children's deliverance services you got to focus on the parents first because if you get people coming in here living in sin or they're fighting in front of the kids and doing what God only knows what at home getting the spirits out of the kids is gonna be tough and those spirits probably came down from the grandparents and so on and they filter down so there's a whole mess in there so Jesus then stops looking at the kid having a seizure Oh, aren't you compassionate? No, he knows what he's doing. He trips over to the dad and then he sees unbelief in the dad. 
his dad doesn't believe because he's had so many disappointments over the years He no longer believes and in Christianity in America. That's the big thing. They've been prayed for by everybody from Kook to Ollie every person in church has prayed for him including the prophets They've all prayed for him and they're still sick and so the person then starts to become discouraged and then they start to develop a blame God mentality then they start the demons start to give them excuses Lots of excuses. Hey, dude, you know, you're not good enough. God doesn't like you uh, God doesn't heal everybody Healing went out with the disciples. He's got a laundry list of excuses. He gives you so you don't get healed But the real excuse is you're doubting and You're disappointed in God as soon as your disappointment leaves your world and heads to heaven your blessings stop right there as soon as you see God as a disappointment, you're finished. Lord, I know you're great. Oh, I know you can heal. I know you're the great God of the universe. You made the worlds. You did this, you did that. But I just wish you could help with. Boom, your prayer just went. Where'd it go? Where'd that prayer go? All right, let's do it all together. Grunt and <laughs> your prayer went right. Down the chute boom it went down there Why cuz Man you're you are you know who you remind me of my dad He was a disappointment too Am I helping anybody? So he goes to the father who doesn't believe and he says if He gives him the same if back if you can believe Remember, it's all based on believing and receiving. If you can believe, all things are possible to the person who believes. You say, well, that verse doesn't work. In English, I know it doesn't work. It's the Greek word pastuo. It means, the Greek verb means to step out on what you believe in. It's not pistis faith, it's to believe. <coughs> believe is a verb and an action word. You must be have faith. And believe that's what he's saying there. he's saying if you can believe having faith is not enough you must put that faith into action pistuo verb step out and get it done the father of the child now we know something else about this the text Padin uh, is a toddler so now we know the kid was sick from infancy and now he was two, three, four years old, something like that, whatever. Okay? And he's his only child. He said, Lord, I do believe, but I've got what? And there, there's the killer. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. You cannot mix, mix doubt and unbelief in with faith because the doubt and unbelief pollutes the faith. You would think it would be the other way around. What do you got to do with these people? You got to hold a seminar like this, and then you got to get them to remove the doubt. See, the person's faith is fine. Every sick Christian has faith to be healed, and their faith is fine. The problem is there's doubt attached to it. In a way, a barnacle attaches to a boat. The boat's fine, it's floating, but man, they got all this crap on the side. So in a counseling session, that's how I approach it. Your faith is fine, honey. It's the doubt that's killing you. Because if you mix in a little leaven, the little leaven leavens the whole lump eventually. Not at that moment. No, it has to go through the process. But it eventually, like moss on a lake, takes over the lake. He said, my faith is fine. Help my unbelief. And this text right here, is your lifesaver it's the lifesaver of the American church in the 21st century 
I just discovered a miracle. Yes, I did. I should be president. <laughs> Your faith is not the problem. It's the unbelief you have in here. Yes. If you and I can agree together to remove that, your faith will expand and the Ooh. devil will be crushed. Come on, sir. Yes. It's not that you need. See, here's how the churches screw up. They keep pumping faith into you. Believe, believe, believe. Faith, faith, faith. Miracle, miracle, miracle. And they speak words from prophets into you, <laughs> trying to pump you up. See, they want a hill song you. Let's pump the person out of their seat. Okay, that doesn't work, does it? Of course it doesn't. Why is church a failure? I just told you, it's not the faith that's the problem in the person; it's the unbelief attached to it. Remove the unbelief. The faith expands in the same space the unbelief had. Boom. You get a miracle from God. Yeah. It's right here. I do believe, just like an American Christian, they have good faith, but he's got unbelief in his heart. Great scripture. Please write that one down. The demons was was getting what he wanted. Now he wants mass confusion, and it starts to happen. The people start running. Okay, every time you get a crowd. Running over to see you, you're in trouble. And I notice many of you can't relate to that because uh, you know you're not the best looking person in the world, and there's usually not a crowd hanging around you. I get that. I, d I don't have many follow me either. I go to a parking lot usually alone. It's it's fine. A crowd starts to come in, and when there's a crowd, there's problems. The demons are drawing in crowds, using the toddler, spinning him around like a top, vomiting, pooping his pants, urinating, screaming, yelling. They're causing a disaster to try to spread confusion. Okay, and then Jesus identifies the spirit that came down from the family tree. Okay, the kid did not sin to get the spirit. Kids are not at fault; they don't sin. Kids don't sin. They don't have their sin imputed to them, right? He, he identifies the demon. Alalos is someone who cannot hear at all. So the kid was stone deaf. Stone deaf, excuse me. Kophos is a stuttering speech problem. Deaf is alalos. Can't hear anything. Epitasso means I'm barking an order at you. Somebody barks an order at you. See? Jesus learned to do this with demons. We learned to do it in marriage. <laughs> and if you've ever had kids, you are an expert at this. Ha ha ha. You're also an expert at using if you've got kids. <laughs> Raising kids, ha ha ha! Woo, that's a full time job. He barks an order at the dean. Now notice the pattern here. You got to look through the text. You got to see the patterns. You got to watch for those patterns. They're very important. Jesus would bark at a spirit, so to speak, instead of casually saying, uh, "Excuse me, deaf and dumb, deaf and dumb spirit." Uh, could I talk to you for just a minute if you got a minute because I'm a prophet and I would like to Ask you if you wouldn't mind if it's not too much trouble if you don't mind my saying Would you mind leaving the toddler and stop causing that seizure and? Pooping and yelling and screaming and rolling around would you mind doing that if you, if you don't mind if you don't if it's not too much trouble. Okay Listen friend the devil's not going to treat you like that. You better not treat him like that. He's going to trash you from pillar to post. He'll do anything to hurt you. Jesus barks at the demon. He commands the spirit. I charge you. That's it. That's it. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, hold on here. 
Lord Jesus, come here for a minute. Now I know you're you're a rookie at this. Let me explain it to you. We need to put this robe on you, and then we need here's your here's your deliverance hat. Now here's your manual from the church to the nation. Can you go ahead? Put your jewelry on, your holy ghost jewelry. Put the, uh, okay, stop that crap. That stuff doesn't do anything for demons except make it worse. They look inside you to see if you've got any faith. They know what you are. He can't do a deliverance because I don't have any holy water. <laughs> you see, as long as you think you have to have the holy water, the demons will remind you, hey, dude, you don't have your holy water. You don't get it, do you? They're, they're smarter than we are. They outthink humans. They can't outthink the Holy Ghost. It's impossible. I charge you, without an outfit on, without any... Jewelry, jewelry from fa Stop it <clears throat> And then he says something really revealing. Oh, this is amazing. Don't go back into that boy again You can't do that with adults. Why the boy didn't have free will He was only a toddler. He couldn't fight for himself He couldn't do what was right he couldn't repent. He didn't know how. He was a child. Children are innocent, honey. Yeah. You can cast the demons out of a kid and keep them from coming back. You can't do that with an adult. You cast the demons out and they must then renew their minds. Yes. Or they will become what I call a recycler. Yeah. Oh, they get rid of demons on Monday. They recycle them on Wednesday. Then they get rid of them on Friday. Then they pick them up next week. They're recycling demons because they do not renew their mind. They do not change their lives. They do not repent of their deep-seated sin. Right. All right. Oh, what's the problem with that? It's kind of like this. Boom. Keep spinning it because sooner or later, bang, one will go off. Do not enter into him anymore. Only good with children. The disciples came back later and said, hey, what happened? What was wrong with the disciples? Didn't have holy water, didn't have any jewelry, didn't have a cone head, robe, shawl. Where's my prayer shawl? God, I gotta have a prayer shawl. There you go. Come on, devil. You need a prayer shawl, shawl like you need another hole in your head. Stop it. Hold on. Let's cast some demons out. Hey, where's my where's my beanie? Come on, come on, sucker. Okay. You think, you actually think demons are afraid of a little round cap you put on? Have you literally lost your mind? Are you, are you on crack? Are you drunk? What? Where in God's name did this religious stuff come from? Mm, could it be? Oh, familiar spirits at work. Excuse me, I should have known that. Jesus said, what's the problem? Was it your procedure? Were you doing this? Were you doing that? What's wrong with you guys? Aren't you prophets? Well, it was in your heart. The demons saw into your heart. Just like they see your lust in there. Just like they see your bitterness. Just like they see your anger, your deep-seated hidden sin. They can look inside you and see you. They saw you. You were confused. You, you had unbelief. You had doubt. Yeah, it's just like uh, rapture. If you sit around and have a big fight over the rapture and throw scriptures back and forth at somebody, at the end of the day, you're going to be going, hmm. Boy, maybe I am mid trib. Let me think. Uh, no, I'm post trib. I'm under trib, aren't I? I don't know. I think the rapture was in the first century. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's a big it. You're going to get confused because you've been arguing over theology. It doesn't work. It breeds demonic insanity.
All right, then what's he saying here? Here it is, Matthew 17. However, this kind, now we got another revelation. Check it out. Genos means generational. This spirit came down through the family tree, through somebody's horrible sin. It was a superpower demon on steroids and nailed that poor kid in the womb. He had nothing to do with it. The, the child was not at fault for anything that happened. However, the kind of unbelief you guys got when you sit around arguing with scribes, that unbelief can only come out by fasting and prayer. He wasn't talking about the demon. He's talking about doubt and unbelief. That's what fasting is for. Not demons These are some of the same demons that are in our society and we've named them differently. Here's what we call them now They're very common now Luke 11 now this scripture is extremely important. I highlighted it One day Jesus was casting out a demonian demon and it was dumb it should have been translated out toss he he was dumb and Kofos is having a speech impediment like stuttering And when the devil was gone out the dumb man spoke and the people were Thamazo in a state of shock What happened there a spirit a Spirit that stuttered got into the head of a man and he stuttered when the spirit was removed that stuttered the man stopped stuttering a Spirit of stuttering got into his brain and attacked his speech centers of his brain on either side right here That's your speech center, right? The spirit stuttered Everything you have if it's demonically rooted is caused by the spirit. So if you have cancer, it's a spirit that has cancer. The spirit has cancer. The spirit has stuttering. The spirit is can't talk. The spirit can't hear. A deaf spirit. The characteristic of the spirit get into the person and they have the same <coughs> symptoms. An anger spirit enters someone in childhood they start developing behavioral problems when they're four years old five years old six years old They start acting up a stool. They start going crazy. Why an anchor spirit a rebellion spirit got into the child and now the child's rebellion The person takes on the characteristics of the spirit yeah. a lust spirit enters the body and the person lusts a homosexual spirit enters the body the person has same-sex attraction Remove the spirit from the body the same-sex attraction drops off The serial adultery drops off The person picks up the quality of the spirit It's not the person Why is that good news well because you can still love a person even though they're jacked up why is that? Because it's the spirit in them that gave them the cancer or the anger or the bitterness, whatever it is. It's not the person. Well, the heck you know that. Because I've had all these spirits come out of people and they become changed human beings. Yeah. Don't you see that? That's what it's saying there. Couldn't be any clearer. So, according to the people that do deliverance, that have the procedures What you got to get the name of the spirit in order to get him out of there That's not in the Bible. You don't have to have the name you already know what kind of spirit it is You say well brother Mike, I don't know I keep screwing everything up. Well, that's the spirit. You know you got a screw up spirit You can just call out the symptoms and the demon will come out. He knows he's caught Because you know he's doing that Spirit of infirmity gets in your body and you can't get healed. Well, he's blocking the healing 
He's a healing blocker. The person's not blocking it. They don't want to be sick. It's not them. What's good news about this? You know, it helps you not blame everybody for everything. You know, if you've got any compassion at all or empathy at all, you can kind of see things from their perspective once in a while. That's why so many people get sexually abused. They then later on become abusers. The spirit transferred. They become sexual abusers like their dad or uncle was or what have you. Remove the spirit and the person is healed. Volume up. The sign's blind. Do you believe when I pray for you right now, you'll see right now? Because Jesus is your healer? Okay. You blind devil, come out in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Recreate. Recreate. Don't let her fall out. Recreate. Blind eye, I command you, see in Jesus' name. Cover up your right eye, darling. Keep it covered real good. You ready to see? You ready to see? Yeah. I can't see. 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 Now let me show you. Cover up your right eye. Cover it up good. How many fingers I got? All right. Now, what was the uh, cause of that uh, blindness? It was a spirit. Correct? Did you hear him? Now this time, let's watch it again. And I want you to watch the reaction of the scribes and Pharisees and the church people. The frozen chosen watching this miracle and then I'll explain why they're doing that Check this out <clears throat> but you were short about an Watch inch. the people was would you say about inch preach the signs blind Do you believe when I pray for you right now? You'll see right now because Jesus is your healer Okay, believe and receive You blind devil come out Blind devil in the name of Jesus Christ right now recreate recreate don't let her fall out recreate healing Blind eye I command you see in Jesus name Cover up your right eye darling Keep it covered real good You ready to see you Ready to see yeah I can't see I can't see I can't see, I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's causing these these useless Christians to sit there like dead dogs? Anybody know? They heard something that didn't fit in with their theology. They freaked. He said, "Did you hear that guy? My God! Some guy came to our church." And he said, for a devil to come out of her eye. Oh my God, that's crazy. There's no devils in our church. So their theology then, boom. So they're frozen in their chairs. They're frozen. Don't you see that? Can't you see it? That was a miracle from God. That was God doing what he does. Good. God's a good God. God's a wonderful person. He likes to help people. He wants to help. But the problem is there are too many prophets around. He can't get through to them. Soon as he said devil, oh, that triggered a debate in their mind. That, Wait a minute here. I'm going to think about that. I need to go over that with Pastor Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just sit over here. Instead of worshiping God for this miracle that I should be dancing around with her, I'll just sit here and think about 
my theology. I knew I shouldn't have left the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Some healings require inner healing first. Now listen to me carefully. This is very important. Very important. Some people can't get healed because they've got problems in their soul that's blocking it. Uh, here it is, Matthew 9. They bring a boy who has palsy. There it is, spinal cord. He's lying on a cot, it says in the Greek. And uh, Jesus seen their faith. Whose faith? The people that loaded him down, not the kid. See? People have assumed the kid had faith. He didn't. They hauled him down there trying to get a miracle from the God because they loved him and cared about him. Like the Syrian woman. He said, be of good cheer. No. Tharseo means to, to release your courage. Have courage. Come on. Why did he tell him that? He was so down. He was so crushed. He was so tired. He was so disappointed. He was so worn out. Listen to me. God is not holding this thing against you. I feel me. God has released you from this illness and this spinal cord injury. People many times get injured, they blame themselves. And they live with a lot of depression and guilt and self-pity. I shouldn't have been driving that. I shouldn't have drank that night. I should have this. I should have done that. I should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. And they get down on themselves, which blocks your miracles. Jesus said, son, have courage. God is releasing you, a feeling of this whole disability mess. Be courageous, son. Then he starts doing what? Get The devil starts debating him again. Well, wait a minute. Whoa. You can't do that. And they get into a debate. But Jesus didn't fall for it. He wouldn't debate them. He just did what? He went ahead and did what he knew was right. Okay? Listen, you got to get these people out of your lives. Yes. People who like to debate and argue and to dump these people. Just grunt and... Get rid of them. See, that's an anointed flush there. That talented, very talented. I have all kinds of skills. I have authority, exosia, to release that from this boy. Wow, that's quite a story there. It's deeper than you think if you just casually read it you're gonna miss all kinds of incredible things in the text the text is loaded with divine inspiration all right how that section go okay good this is working oh this is working what's a medical root well two-thirds of Jesus healings were not related to demons, right? Jesus took the blind man by the hand. He took him out of town. He spit in his eyes. Ice into his eyes. Not on his eyes. Spit in his eyes. And I've decided to implement that into our procedures here at the Arizona Deliverance Center. Tonight, we're going to have a spitting healing service. All right. Uh, is my wife gone? Is she Karen gone? She left. Oh, good. Okay, we will proceed. We will be lining you up here, and and we will be blowing you out. See, the phony TV preacher—they'll blow you down on stage, and then prophesy over you. God is healing. You. Now here we spit on you. Yes, sir. I'll be an internationally known figure in days after this service. He put his hands upon him and said, do you see anything? Tease, anything. You see anything? He goes, what? Yes, I see men. They, they look like trees walking. Well, trees don't walk, but in a wind, it kind of looks like they're, you know, walking back and forth, kind of like that, and they're all kind of walking somewhere, particularly after you've been drinking. And he puts his hand upon him again. He takes it a second time. So here's the procedure for those of you who are legalistic. 
the guy doesn't see it coming <laughs> He puts his hands on him pulls him off and says do you see anything? Spit drooling <laughs> Notice there's not a second spit Okay, put that in your procedure Call the Pope I see man it looks like their trees are walking around translation. I can't quite see it's it's buzzy. It's fuzzy Puts it again. Okay, don't be afraid or discouraged or let doubt sneak in when you have to pray somebody through a, a little longer than just one thing see the 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 idiots in the word of faith movement are, are blabbers and they blab out Pop. There you go. You're done. You're healed you're delivered. Pop, you're a nice person. Pop, you're not an idiot. Okay. You go back and check those people out 10 minutes later. That one still has demons. That one's still sick. That guy's still an idiot. This one's still a moron. That word of faith crap doesn't work. Don't get involved in it. Because it brings enormous disappointment. Hello? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could just word of faith them. I command all of you. All of you. Anybody in this room is stupid. I command your IQ to jump 20 points. Go! <laughs> okay, you're smart. You're smart. You're smart. You're smart. No problem. You really think that could happen? Do you, do you really believe that? I used to be a multi-millionaire back in the day. Multi-millionaire. I lost it all. That's embarrassing to admit on YouTube. Do you think I can actually speak that money back into my bank account? Do you think I can do that? I command in the name of Jesus Christ for nine million dollars to come back into my bank account. Go! Now, do you believe I just got nine million dollars back, buddy? You don't? Oh, this guy's got no faith. He's a downer. Get him out of here. <laughs> okay, cut the word of faith crap. That stuff does not work, and it's going to lead to all kinds of hurt and disappointment in people's lives. Do not get involved in that stuff. That is nuts. If you're not healed, there's a reason for it, and I'm going over those reasons tonight. You've got to look a little deeper. Okay, I realize the lazy person, yeah, I, I would like to do it too. Absolutely. Of course I would. You're healed. He, cancer, go. You're, you're fine. Demons, you're out. Go. They're all gone. I would like to do that. Don't tell me. I, I would love to do that. I would love it. If that were possible, I would be doing it. It's not. You've got to look below the surface on some of this stuff. And notice what's going on beneath what appears to be happening. What's really happening is not necessarily the appearance. I, I better get going here. If you got to pray for somebody twice or something, don't worry about it. Okay, you're fine. It's not you. You're not a bad person. You're not a stupid person. You, you're, it's not because you don't have any faith. You're fine. Your faith is fine. Just help somebody a little further. That's all. Spit in them again. Spit in them twice. And there you see trees walking. He couldn't see, and now he sees fine. What would have happened if Jesus just left? What if Jesus was a word of faith person? How'd you like that one, buddy? I didn't see, I didn't see anything. I feel, gee. Heal. You see men as trees walking? That's good enough. Just stay away, stay away from trees. I'm too busy. <laughs> Listen, he wasn't going to leave him like that. He did have a little patience with somebody and, yes. you know, come back. Help him out a little bit. But don't bark at him and run out like an evangelist. An evangelist comes to your church. They, he's already been paid. Here's the lineup of the sick people. You go down, heal, 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 and then you bolt out that door. They run. Because they know this one was healed, that one wasn't. This one was healed, that one wasn't. So the ones that weren't healed, they're going to want to ask him questions. He doesn't want to answer any questions. So he bolts out the dope. 
Why? He can't answer the questions. All of us, human nature, we don't want to answer questions we don't know the answers to. If you're insecure, then you're going to want to give somebody an answer like you're a prophet so that your deep-seated insecurity, you don't have to face the fact you don't know something. See, It's always better to say you don't know something than it is to give somebody a fabricated answer and hurt them. Now here's some other healings that do not have anything to do with demons, correct? And I listed them for you there if you want to study them later. You know, the blind people, the centurion, the woman with the issue of blood, the boy who was uh, dead in a coffin. Listen, when you die, you don't have any demons anymore. What was that? Yeah, once you drop dead, the demons leave your body and then they go to your other family members. They don't stay in a dead body. That person's already gone. They, they, they've got that one. Well, this kid didn't have any demons. He was dead, so there was something killed him, and Jesus resurrected him from the dead. Didn't have nothing to do with demons. Correct? Well, that's your short section. Okay, let's get into the hard part. We'll go through it quick. Here's the number one thing that blocks healings is unforgiveness and ought. And it's one of the biggest failures of the American church. There's a difference between unforgiveness and ought. Unforgiveness is obvious. Ought is not obvious. Unforgiveness is what it says. You haven't forgiven them. That'll block your healing. Oh, it'll block everything. It's awful. Ought is the subtle, quiet stuff in the soul that it's that little yucky emotion you have about that person. It's that, yeah, yeah. Did you forgive him? Yeah, I forgave him, but God, I don't want to see him again. Well, why don't you want to see him again? If you if you forgave him, well, I forgave him. I went to the class. You went to the class. How'd you get rid of that unforgiveness? Well, a prophet prayed for me. Oh, you got a prophet praying for you. That's great. You're not getting healed. Why? You got. Yuck in there for that person. You got <laughs> self thought is the worst. You got this sense you don't like yourself. You see yourself as a failure, deficient, a loser, something deep seated ought yeah, about yourself. That'll block your healing in a heartbeat. If you bring your gift to the altar and you have ought, it is the Greek phrase. Uh oh. Leave your gift there. Go your way. First be reconciled. Dialasso means to attempt to fix it. If it doesn't fix, it's no longer your problem, it's their problem. Okay? But you tried to fix it. Then come and offer your gift to God. Don't you see that? It's so clear. He does he said ought. Oh boy, here's a big three. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus goes to his hometown and wants to start a healing revival and can't get it going. Why? Somebody got offended at him. A number two problem, offenses. Number one problem in the church. Unforgiveness, ought, and offenses block people's healings left and right including self-offense it's the greek word scandalizo it means to be scandalized at something the people in nazareth were scandalized offended in him a prophet is not without honor except in his own country in his own house that's true of you listen don't worry about it you're the only saved person in your family that's fine don't don't absorb that offense from everybody else. Okay, you got saved, and the rest of your families are Mormons. It's all good. Relax. They excommunicated you, right? Cults will excommunicate you. Jehovah Witnesses will drop you like a bad habit. Boom, you're gone. Let it go, dude. 
Let it go. You're in a new family now. You have a new heavenly father. You don't need a dad. You got a new family, a divine family. You don't have to have all the Jehovah Witness relatives. They were offended that you became a Christian. Correct? Once you take an offense, your healing is lost. He couldn't do many money works there because of their unbelief. Taking an offense at someone leads to not believing them. I got a friend of mine that does deliverance and he has a church close to here. And he has this, he's a great guy. He does a great job with deliverance and he's really smart. Great Bible teacher. But he, like everybody else, me included, I suppose, he's got some screwy doctrines. One of them is, there's two different Holy Spirits, you know. There's this Holy Spirit, and then there's the Spirit of Jesus. They're two different ones, okay? So when I heard that, I said, wow, that is incredibly dumb. I said, well, I don't care. I love the guy, and I'm just going to that. I, I, I love the guy. I mean, he, he's great. Okay, so nobody's perfect. Nobody has perfect doctrines except the Lord. He, all his doctrines were perfect, right? I don't have perfect doctrines. Uh, I know none of you have noticed that, but I'm not. A, I'm not a perfect person. You know, I'm a flawed person. You haven't seen any of those flaws tonight. I mean, you're looking up here like, oh my God, this guy. Wow, did he come from? Is, He's dropped in from heaven. Gosh, this guy's real. What a teacher he is. No, look, everybody screws up and everybody has flaws. And you and I are required by God to cut people some slack. That's Hebrew. Cut them a little slack, dude. See that guy sitting there? What's your name, sir? Chris. Chris. Look at Chris's hair. <laughs> look at that hair. Now, back in the 1980s or something he would have been thrown out the door wearing a hair like that at church I'm not even making that up I wish he had 50 friends with hair hair like that and I wish they were all here tonight for deliverance <laughs> what's the point I'm trying to make am I gonna cut my hair like that well, heck no I mean I got <laughs> God I got a I got an image to hold I mean YouTube friends they don't know where that What's the point of trying to make? Hey, listen, cut people some slack, Jack. Stop. <laughs> Somebody just lied back there and said they loved him. They don't, they don't like that guy. No, they think he looks, they think he's Native American. Now, let stuff go. Learn to let it slide, okay? Okay. Um, different doctrines, different theology. It's not, it's not worth it. It isn't worth fighting over. It truly isn't. Because you're liable to take an offense. If you take an offense, then you will not have unbelief for that person. So had I taken an offense, what? Two Holy Spirit? That's so stupid. God, I can't believe. That's a, are you kidding? Oh, jeez. Stop. Leave that. I'm going to send him an email. I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to do a radio show on it. I would, I would not believe anything the man says again, correct? Because I took an offense at the man, right? No, I, don't, I look at it this way. Look, nobody's perfect. Everybody teaches things that are a little off. Some of them are a lot off. Hey, a lot of this stuff is good. So you can look at things two different ways. You can nitpick one thing that's off, but what about the other 500 things that he that he has is right? That's right. Jesus said in John 16, do not get offended. It is a sin on your part and it will block your healings if you get offended. Yeah. And every Christian has the potential of getting offended and the worst offense is in God. Because everybody has to make a decision. If you make a bad decision, what happens? You have the possibility of blaming God for it. Why? Because he knew what was right and he didn't tell you and didn't warn you. 
or he warned you in a way that you didn't catch so you can blame him for it if you want to blame somebody for something you can always find some way to do it it doesn't require any skills now I feel sorry for some people that uh, like my wife sometimes she tries to blame me for stuff but it she's always wrong it's unbelievable it's unbelievable I've never seen anybody were so wrong thus saith the Lord don't take an offense that's what I'm reading it you wanted prophetic words right voila I give you the prophet and high priest of our profession bingo oh this is this is great Taking offenses generates these things, and if you do it, you're going to go home sick tonight. Okay, you can't get healed taking offenses, please. It grieves and quenches the Holy Spirit. If you're the type of person who is easily offended, your life is going to, <laughs> capital S, suck. Why? Because the demons know you're an offense taker. They know you get pissed off at stuff. Oh, oh yeah. They said, what about me? Oh, as soon as you see, oh, like that, as soon as you hear them word, oh, you know that person's in deep trouble. They don't even say another word. As soon as you hear that gasp, what? If you hear a what like that, oh, man, that person's done. They're done. Oh, yeah. Because the demons go, hey, we just heard them go, what? They just went, whoa. I don't believe you she said that. You talking to me. The demons are hearing you say that. Oh, yeah. And so what they're going to do now is institute a new program. It's an offense program. Hello? They will start sending you people to piss you off. <laughs> they will send them to you. They will crawl out from under rocks. They will drop in out of ceilings. They will come at you from every direction. Home, church, work, doesn't matter. Some of them will actually hunt you down. Social media, offenses have gone to the thousandth power now with social media. Social media is a massive plague. People are getting offended at the drop of a key. Hurt on social media. It's all a plot. They know you take offenses. They know you don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> as soon as you hear a hum like that, the demons heard that hum, and they'll go, hey, this, this, this dumb broad, she takes offenses. Let's finish her. So the demons actually orchestrate a bunch of offenses to come at them like somebody working the speed bag in a gym. It's the God's honest truth. I'm telling you it happens all the time. Amen. You go to church and you go, well, you know, this would be a good idea if we changed this program to that and added this and did that. Oh, that sounds real good, but uh, now nah, we don't want to do it. Obviously, <laughs> 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 oh, so you get that stomach thing, you get the bladder jumping, the bowels move. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 as soon as the demons see you do that, they go, hey. This imbecile doesn't like to have his plans rejected by church people. Do you see that? Okay, let's give him some more ideas. So the demons start giving the Christian godly ideas. So they will promote them at church and then get rejected. Did you hear that? This guy's on coke. Demons give Christians godly ministerial ideas. Why don't you minister to the homeless south of baseline over by the prison there? That's a great ministry. That's a good idea. Pastor, can you help me get some people from the church to go down into a crime ridden area and minister to the homeless? Why don't you go by yourself? Whoa, what? Hmm, hmm. There it goes. There, the, there it goes. Both the stomach goes. Oh, then their bladder. Oh, there's the bowels. Then it's next week. Hey, you need to get into the children's ministry. 
<laughs> I just had a then they'll bring a prophet to you to confirm their lie the Lord has spoken to me as a star and told me to tell you to get the children's ministry. God is speaking to you. That's a, that's a kundalini spirit talking to you. They don't know it. So you think, I've got confirmation. I'm supposed to work with the kids. You go to the pastor. I think I'm supposed to. The pastor knows you and realizes you got the personality of the King Cobra. <laughs> And they go, you know what? We got enough workers. We don't need you. There goes the routine. And it never stops. And it goes on for decades. Thus saith the Lord, don't take an offense. You will not fall into any demonic cycle of any kind if you do not take offenses. If you do not take offenses, for example, this guy here with his hairdo. <laughs> He could have got mad at me and run out the door and went over to his church Wherever it is and told oh, God Almighty that Mike Smith hmm, I don't, hmm. God he, he pointed me out in the hair. He's, he's a racist. He's a bigot He could have done that, but you see the guy doesn't take offenses He sits there and he just laughed it off. I wasn't trying to hurt him. I was just illustrating something So the guy took it in context and let the thing go Christians don't let stuff go they can't let it go. They got the, their bowels. <laughs> they get the bladder going. Ah! Whoop, there it goes. Got diarrhea. You took. If you take offenses, they'll send you people. I'm telling you, they will send them to you. They are able to send people. Satan sent those people to Job. Come on. Acts chapter 19. After this incredible deliverance. Healing and revival broke out uh, The sons of Sceva thought they were doing deliverance and they had their procedures down and the procedures didn't work out They got beat up In that case the demon took an offense Guess what happened? Number two if you have a history of witchcraft or new age You got into an area of extreme danger Okay worse than regular sinning this is sinning on steroids. Witchcraft is the worst thing you can get involved in. It is extremely dangerous. So, tonight when you go home, you will get rid of anything that draws in familiar spirits. Yep, there's all your horror movies, your, all those movies. Remember those? You're going to get rid of your old Bibles you had when you were living in sin. Remember those books you used to buy, New Age, different things. Throwing them out. Throwing them out tonight. Religious books different religions Okay Right you're gonna get your metal rock music. You're gonna get rid of that, right? You ever listen to any heavy metal? Can't tell a word they're saying Can't can't figure anything out. It's unbelievable. I don't know how they do it You got to have a demonic gift to be able to listen to that music You need a demonic gift. I listen to it. I could what's he saying? What does Row! mean? What's up? What does that mean? On the other guy, oh yeah, that's it, man. Oh, that's great. And he, his body's moving toward the music. You gotta have a demonic gift to follow metal. Now, a regular person doesn't know what they're saying. Mm -mm. Not gonna happen. You have uh, stuff you buy on your, you inherit them from your relatives. You bought them when you were uh, traveling. You were on vacation. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Draws in from your mood rings. Mood rings. See, you don't need a mood ring. I'll give you a mood ring. Thus saith the Lord, don't take an offense. There's your mood ring. That's your mood ring. You need a mood ring. <clears throat> Good luck charms. Oh, I always wear this because my mother wore it. And then I, well, listen, yeah, your mother had rheumatoid arthritis and died in bed. Remember that? Oh. Maybe I should get rid of it. Oh, I need a dream. I, 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 the American dream. No, throw that thing out. It draws in spirits, Native American stuff. Throw, throw it out. White witchcraft. Here's the new one sweeping the church. Christian yoga. Oh, my God, it's dangerous. Oh, these good Christian white witchcraft, wholesome, positive-oriented movies. Throw these things out of your house. Get rid of Harry. Harry's a, Harry's a potter's a problem. He probably thinks he's a prophet. In Acts 19, the revival hit, and guess what? 
They brought all their crap out and then they did what? Boom Praise God you're gonna burn that sickness out of your body tonight You're gonna burn those offenses out of there You're gonna burn those old bitter wounds out of your body tonight. Yes, sir. That's right You're gonna get healed tonight. Some of you are getting a haircut <laughs> Hidden iniquity that I just revealed sometimes blocks your healing Hear that? Yeah, listen to this hidden nobody knows about it Yes, sir. If I regard iniquity rah in my heart The Lord will not hear me Simon the sorcerer Acts chapter 8 was a textbook new convert who had bitterness picria means poison and he was bound in iniquity Willful disobedience if you're doing something over and over and over and over year in and year out You're probably not healed God has convicted you on it 50 times other people have come to you and said hey, maybe you should stop that and you're still doing it. Guess what? Healing blocker First John chapter 3 Whatever we ask we receive it Believe it and receive it. Why because we keep his commandments uh -oh. And we do those things that are pleasing are us that he agrees with duh Poieo means to practice. In that verse, it's written in the present continuous tense, which means that you're continuously, regularly practicing things that God agrees with. And you're doing it not because God's going to hit you with a club, but because you and He love each other and you don't want to hurt Him. Because of love. Hello, not because of fear. Fear is legalism. Oh my God. See, the wicked witch of the West was standing there. And the other witch, the good witch, what was her name? Glenda, Glenda goes, Oh, be gone before somebody drops a house on you. She goes, Well, she had fear that she was going to get a house dropped on her like her sister. Nobody saw that movie. Yeah. Oh, bad example. Got to come up with some better ones. <laughs> she would have fit in with American Christianity. See, when you sin, God's waiting there to bash you over the head. You stupid Christian. That is not how He looks at it. He looks at you through divine eyes. He sees differently than people do. Yeah. People will nitpick the stuff out of you. Father's not doing that. He's not nitpicking you. You don't want to sin. Why? Because you're going to get in trouble. No. A child does that. Okay. If you if you do that, you are still a spiritual child. Children stop doing things because they're afraid of getting hit. <laughs> don't put your hand on the hot stove. The child then learns. Hey, wait a minute. If I stick my, I'm going to get whacked. Correct? So the child stops doing it. That's a baby. You are not a baby. You are a born again, spirit filled child of God. And you don't put your hand on the stove because you know it will hurt someone who loves you. And you don't want to hurt someone you love. See the difference? Legalism condemns love heals. Be doers of the word of God, the logos, that means the whole word of God, not Rama, which is a portion of the word of God. Be doers of the word and not deceiving, not hearers only because you will deceive yourself. <coughs> Paralogizomai. Oh my god, I just stumbled on a supernatural revelation. Christians 
frequently deceive themselves. Oh, can't believe you said that, Mike. Oh, it's shocking. Shocking, nothing. You know it as well as I do. If Rodney Dangerfield were here tonight, he's dead, but if I resurrected him, brought him over, he would say, Christians are nuts. And people would go, hmm, let me think about that. Yeah? Hmm. Yeah, they're nuts. Why are they nuts? They self delude themselves. That person's a sinner, but I'm fine. They're screwing up. I'm doing a good job. It's self delusion. Why? They haven't renewed their minds on the Word of God. Deceiving your own selves. What is the deception? You can compromise your faith, take offenses, have secret sins, do all these things, and just get healed and have all the blessings of God. It'll all flow right to you. No, friends, the demons are watching you, and they're going to block everything. You and the Lord aren't the only two individuals in this process. There's another one there. The enemy. Low confidence blocks healings. Do not cast away your parousia, your outspoken confidence. It's what the person truly believes in their heart, and they speak it out. That's not a word of faith. Word of faith is to read it and blab it, but not necessarily truly believe it. <laughs> See, the idea is if you keep blabbing it enough, you'll start to believe it. That's the theory. And it doesn't work. The only thing by continually blabbing it is that you start to develop uh, some skills sharing it. You get it down pat. Get on your way, brother. See, it just flows. They're not on their way. They're in bondage. They need to look. You know they're not. You're just buffaloing them. You're trying to encourage them. You can't encourage people with lies and fabrications or self-delusions. It doesn't work that way. You will know the truth, and the truth will. <clears throat> you have need of what? Endurance. Hupomone is endurance. What's the problem now? 21st century Christianity, total collapse of Christians. They have no endurance at all. Why? They're all baby Christians here in America. They want everything handed to them on a silver platter. There's no persecution here. So they don't learn to fight. Nobody learns spiritual warfare. Nobody learns to fight back. They learn to take it. After you develop your endurance, what will what will happen? After you have done the will of God, Thelema. What is that? God's plan for your life. God's plan is different for every single person. Subtle differences. Yours is different than his. Yours is different than hers. Mike, Mike, over here. Can we make a quick announcement? Yeah. Uh, there is somebody here to pick up Teresa Village. Thank you. Where's Teresa Village at? All right, guys. Eric, can you hold her down? We don't. Stop her. Seize her. <laughs> Can't believe it. I, I had a weird Roman thing come over me there. Strange. I better come to the altar tonight. Thelema, what is that? God's chosen plan for you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I know they're, they're peaceful plans, God. They're good plans. I want to give you something you can expect, something you can rely on. I want to take care of you clear to the end of your life, the great prophet said. A real prophet, not the ones now. Jeremiah, a real prophet. I know the thoughts I think toward you. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of love, thoughts of acceptance. I love you. I want to help you. I'm talking for God here. I'm legally allowed to do that because I read it. I can speak for God. If I read it, I can speak for God. 
thank you you will receive it see believe it do it and receive it bingo family curses and sins will block your healings we went over children okay marriages are extremely dangerous okay what's the problem with marriages well at some point in time usually very early someone is physically capable of getting married and creating children a 15 year old kid is able to create a child or 12 yeah just because you can make a family doesn't mean you should have one hello <laughs> oh boy so in America the divorce rate used to be skyrocketing it stopped now and it's gone down a little bit it's about 50% now the reason being people don't get as married as often anymore <coughs> and that rate is going to continue to drop because the Millennials and the nuns they call them the younger ones they're not going to get married because they're so self-absorbed with social media and their electronic devices and they become so self-centered that they can't get married because getting married requires you to sacrifice oh, oh my god what do you say what do you say let's get him seize him no listen marriage has cost you something and you have a child you get married it's a disaster and so husbands are usually bad and they don't want to live with their wives anymore so Peter said stay with them okay and place honor upon the wife what does that mean to male means to place value upon them but it doesn't mean to agree with everything they say or do okay but you must still value them as a person and as a wife and he says hey the wives generally speaking are weaker but that is not true in every marriage yeah I've seen a few of those where the husbands were getting body slammed <clears throat> because you are together for the grace of this life your marriage is ordained by God and he's going to protect you husband and wife so he says if you hurt your wife and you dishonor her what happens to the husband a copto means to chop down a tree right who was the president that chopped down the cherry tree who did that George George a copto and that's what happens to your prayers you pray them and the demons chop them down why you just trashed your wife you're fat you're stupid hey uh, you took an offense oh man there goes your prayers husbands let me talk to you for a minute wives are dangerous and you got to learn how to handle them that's right you got to compromise got to give in here and there number one you got to stop taking offenses why if you take an offense you're gonna say or do something against her you're gonna hurt her you're going to dishonor her what's gonna to happen to your prayers yeah that's Aramaic <laughs> there goes your prayers you can't get healed because you told you you have to tell her what to do you dominate her you control her you you're jealous you're whatever it is okay you got it you can't stop that you got to repent of it tonight repent Husbands, let's work it out. Boom. That guy's chopping your prayers down. <clears throat> Repetitive sins blocks prayers. Hebrews 12. We read through the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, right? There's all the witnesses, faithful witnesses. So let us lay aside. Apotheosis means to dump it. Dump every uncus burden you are carrying. You are by commanded by God to back your trailer up in the, this dump and dump out all this emotional crap out of your life it's a burden that's wearing you down 
you're worried about your children. Oh God, they're on drugs. They're pregnant. They're this. They're that. I get it. You love them. Dump that burden. It's destroying you spiritually. It's going to block your healing. Dump it. Back up and dump. Okay? There it is. Dump these burdens you're carrying. Husband, ex-husband, ex-wife, whatever it is. Family member, parents. Dump them. What is that? And you are to dump the sin that so easily... Uparistatus blocks your healing. Sin can block your healing. Okay. Block your healing. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Okay? What kind of patience? Patience for yourself. Okay? Stop being hard on yourself. You're not going to become a gigantic faith healer overnight. It's not going to happen. You're not, you may not get rid of all the demons in one session. Hey, you might have to whittle them down. You might not get healed in one session. You might have to whittle it down. Have some patience with yourself. Because if you start nitpicking yourself, the spirits are going to come right back in, and they're going to help you nitpick yourself because they can't stand you. You think your relatives don't like you? <laughs> they love you compared to demons. They love you compared to demons. Absolutely love you. Blockers. These blockers will block your prayers and your healings. Come on. God is calling you to heal and deliver people. Did you know that? You've been called by God. That's why you came here tonight. Jesus called the 12. He sends them out two by twos. Hey, no, you're not supposed to be an island. Everybody needs support. And he gave them authority over unclean spirits. And they went out and they preached to men that they should what? Oh, this five-letter word is a plague to American Christians. They don't want to repent. They want greasy grace. They cast out many devils. They anointed with oil many that are sick. They healed them. Wonderful. Luke 10, heal the sick and say, the kingdom of God has come to you. That's what you're supposed to be doing. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, oh my gosh, even the demons are subject to us through your name. Jesus said what? Behold, I give you, exousia, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis, supernatural power of the enemy. He's talking to you. Nothing will hurt you. But, he says, but, there's a but here. What is that? If you have all kinds of gifts from God, that's great, and I hope you get more. But that's not the source of your life. It's not the source of your joy. Or shouldn't be. If it is, you're going to become unbalanced as a minister. Okay? It happened to me years ago. And I cast the demon out of some guy the first time. Oh, gosh, that was incredible. And the demons came to me. They said, hey, Mike, they know my name. You're a killer when it comes to deliverance. You're great. Wow, you're awesome. Well, you're kicking it, boy. You got us running, man. We collapse when you come in. My God, you're like Jesus. Listen, if somebody starts complimenting you or kind of building you up on stuff and they do it too much, that's a red flag. Somebody else is behind that. That's called flattery. And that's them. Yeah. And I was listening to it too. I did. I got sucked. Sucked right in. And about two deliverances later, I got my face kicked in. Came back down to earth. I thought, man, that demon wasn't coming out. He was yelling at me too. He hurt my feelings. My choking offense. Well, see, the devil, had, he set me up. He set me up with flattery. Then he chopped me down. Don't you get it? They do it all the time. They love to flatter you. Okay? I was actually flattering that guy with a haircut. It was a backhanded kind of flatter. 
you had to have discernment to catch it, but I I was actually complimenting the guy <laughs> Karina stop it Notwithstanding don't rejoice in your giftings or that you've done this rejoice at what what should you be rejoicing at? Oh man, that is something Casting demons out that means nothing compared to I am going to glory someday I can't believe it my name a rotten stinking filthy sinner is in the Lamb's book of life That's unbelievable. That's a miracle from God. I should have never been saved in the first place. That was all mercy That's something to rejoice over Right That's what he was saying there in other words balance you must have balance as a Christian that's what basically what Christ is saying. Be balanced. These signs shall follow you. You believe. You're stepping out of your faith. This too, oh, you're stepping out of your faith. You started it. You came here tonight. Simeon is miracles. These are miracles. They will cast out ekbalo, throw out spirits, demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. That's you he's talking to. You, dude, you, child of God, you have the Holy Ghost, you have faith, your faith is fine. You have to be perfect to have a ministry. Of, are you kidding me? You got to begin. <laughs> perfect. Who's that guy? Evan Roberts. I mean, that guy was unbelievable. He had anointing and went through the roof. He saw, oh my goodness, I don't know. Thousands healed what happened to him Lost his mind cracked up lost his mind the demons got it. I'll skip the next guy there Can't take that who's that guy? Oral Roberts, oh my god, this guy saw every miracle in the book left his healing ministry I'm not making this up. He left leaves his healing ministry because he's pooped he's tired of it He decides to build Hospitals in the city of faith in Tulsa I'm not joking. He leaves his ministry and wants the <laughs> The demons go hey oral come here, buddy Listen, we're tired of getting our faces kicked in with you with these putting up these tents And uh, hundreds of people going home completely healed. We're sick of it. We're tired of you beating us into the ground We got a better idea for you boy build a hospital and Link faith and medicine together. Wow. That's divinely inspired. Medicine will welcome us with open arms. Of course they will. Oral, go do it. Retired years later. Forty million dollars in debt. City of faith closed. The guy saw every miracle in the book. Don't you get it? You don't have to be perfect to serve God and get the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Who's that lady? Catherine Kuhlman, the weirdest person you ever met. Strangest personality. Strangest person. I saw her in person when I was young. One miracle after the other. Who's next? Who's that guy? Yeah, Miracle Valley, right down by Sierra Vista. What happened to him? This, this guy saw every miracle there was to see. Died drunk in a hotel room in San Francisco. What was he doing in San Francisco? Getting evaluated for a second surgery on his knee. Listen to me carefully. Ministers are the hardest people to get healed. You know why? They know too much. I'm not making that up. Ministers are sicker than regular people. He's dead. What happened to that lady? Who's that? Oh my gosh, what a ministry she had. Amy Simple McPherson. She saw every miracle in the world. What happened to her? Died of prescription overdose in a hotel room in Oakland. You don't have to be perfect to serve God. Hey, listen, grace covers this stuff. Mercy covers it. 
what's the, why am I doing this? Am I, am I attacking these people? Not, no, not, a, not in one, not in a second would I attack them. I love those people. I like them. You know why they're flawed like me? I don't want to be around people who are perfect. It makes me feel insecure. Jeez. Hey, check this out. I got this for you. Look at that. Look at that. Thousands delivered from demons. They heard and saw demons coming out of the crusade in Los Angeles in 1954. Look at that. Thousands set free from demons last week. This is your last chance. Last. This, this guy saw so many people healed. It was unbelievable. Died, died in San Francisco drunk in a hotel room. That's Amy Simple McPherson. Where is she? She's on that hill near Inglis Temple there. That she had a monthly stretcher day. Can you imagine that? Bring your relatives on a stretcher and they carry it home. Was she a flawed person? Enormously flawed. Hey, look, you don't have to be perfect to serve God. You don't have to be perfect to get an incredible anointing. Oh my God, who's that? Dowie, the father of faith healing. Zion, Illinois. Everybody in town was healed. He mentored John Lake. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he was one of the two witnesses. Died alone. Bankrupt. Bankrupt of the ministry and the whole city of Zion, Illinois. That guy saw so many people healed. It was unbelievable. Who's the other guy? Branham. Oh my gosh, this guy. This guy had an anointing you wouldn't believe. He had a gift of knowledge that was off the hook. Insane. He would call people out of the crowd and give them their address and phone numbers. That's how attuned he was. Print his hands on you. Very humble man. Very broken. Very nice person. Oh, just unbelievably humble. Talked in a nice, quiet voice. So sweet, you know. Great guy. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he's one of the two witnesses. Lost his mind. Wanted to be a teacher. Third grade dropout. God didn't call you oral to build cities of faith stay with what your calling is see he didn't call Branham to teach he said hey buddy here stay over here where I put you see if you want to get out of where God put you as that scripture said you have to do the things that please him that he agrees with otherwise the devil's going to take pot shots at you and he's going to smash you hello yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. let me I'll get through here quicker here look at that 1920s Illinois, look at the cathedral of people there. Thousands of people healed Alexander Dowie. Unbelievable. Look at there. There's a, a, one of a Branham's Crusades. 1937. Look at the crowds coming to see this guy. Very humble guy. A little guy, too. Like a little squatty, humble, kind of introverted, kind of quiet guy. God, this guy had the anointing order. The devil shocked. At the people getting healed. The devil eventually got him. Well, what are you saying, Mike? You're running Bill Branham down? I absolutely not love Bill Branham. Everybody can get caught. There is nobody alive who is above falling. That's why the Bible says be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil roams around, he's looking for you. But he's looking for an opening. See, he's not going to come at you where you're strong. See, you're not going to do that. He'll come at you where you're weak. He's smart. Christians, dumb. Who's that guy? Bill Seymour started what? Azusa Street. Can you believe that? He had one eye, dropped out of college, no education. Zusa Street Revival started. 
through that guy. What happened to him? Sitting in the church alone about a year later, everybody left him. He screwed the whole revival up. <coughs> Who's the other guy? Jack Coe. This guy used to see, saw oh, unbelievable healings. Unbelievable. He would just line them up. And he was so out of shape and fat that he'd have to sit in a chair and pray for him. Because he wouldn't take care of himself. He didn't get any sleep, had a horrible diet, died in his mid 30s. So they'd line him up here and he'd pray for him while he was sitting down. You're healed, you're healed. I mean, one after the other. One after the other. Not even, it wasn't even close. The devil just losing everything until they got him. Hey, why don't you do this on two hours of sleep? Don't take care of yourself. Yeah, just keep eat anything you want. Tastes good, doesn't it? Work yourself to death. Put in 20 hour days. You're fine. You got the anointing. Is this making any sense to anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> These guys are flawed people, but God loved them and used them. Look at that. He uses Azusa Street. Thousands of people were were saved and baptized in that revival. I think it was unbelievable. Incredibly great. Look at that. There's Oral Roberts in one of his tent meetings before he got deceived and led off into this medical stuff. Look at that. He had incredible healings in his meetings. Look at that. There's prop, Prophet Cobus, South Africa. What happened to him? The demons told him to start teaching that eternal life applied to your life now. So if you lived a sinless life and you were close to God, you didn't have to die. That guy saw so many healings. It was unbelievable. He had a massive anointing. What happened to him? Died of cancer. <laughs> Cobus, time out, bud. They, his followers believed it so much, they left the corpse in the church for two weeks. Round-the-clock vigils trying to raise him from the dead <clears throat> After a while Stinking pants set in Time to bury prophet Cobus What's the point there the same point I've been making Who's that guy? You don't recognize him you don't recognize that building you guys just move here There's one yeah, the older guy back there. He got it <laughs> Tatum and Shay, right? Neil Frisbee our local faith healer. He used to travel the country in the, in the, in the Healing days, you know back in the 50s 60s. He wrote like 200 books He, he had all kinds of healing what happened to him cracked up thought he was one of the two witnesses lost everything some guy came in and talked to him out of his church and deceived him as a minister and stole the church from him. Disinherited his family. The, the whole family just split like that. The whole thing ended up in disaster. How'd that go? Not good. I apologize for that section. How do I get healed and get my ministry? You just go through the list. It's it's a quick one, but it's going to take some determination on your part. Yeah. You're going to have to humble yourself and repent. You're going to have to stop praying over demons. If you look through the test, can you see the pattern there? Jesus never prayed over demons. He prayed before he faced demons. Then he took command. You cannot pray and ask God, Jesus, please cast this demon out of me. Don't pray that prayer anymore. It's not going to work. It hasn't worked, has it? Okay, thank you. Brother Mike is so smart. It's going to require you to pray, but it's not going to be a dinner prayer. Those prayers don't work. Okay? We're going to need some repentance prayers out of you. 
serious repentance prayers you say brother Mike I don't want to do that okay that's okay you keep your illness you keep your Mickey Mouse Christian life it's yours go ahead and take it home but if you have any interest in getting rid of it I'm giving you some tips here they're going to help you you got to get desperate before God and pray from your guts blind Bartimaeus the woman from Syria the two blind men <coughs> One more issue of blood. These people were not casual dinner prayers. Yay, God, bless my food. Amen. <laughs> I'm anointed. Well, my gosh, brother, you pray like a prophet. No, you're not praying like a prophet. You're praying like a real human being. <clears throat> now, this should be you. Volume up, lights down. From your waist down. And the right side is affected Volume up. Now, Jesus, we ask that his little limbs be healed and that they shall be restored. Restore them tonight in the name of Christ the Lord. Oh, God, loosen that little foot up and take the Stiffness, oh, it's coming now, son. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, God. Now then, Billy Ray, I want you to raise that leg up like that. Oh, you can do it! Raise this one up, son. Now raise this little leg up, son. Oh, that's wonderful tonight. It, it, it is straightening. How can you tell it's straightening? I can lift my leg up like that. You can lift it up. Oh, Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Brother Deweese, we're going to put him down now. Honey. Oh, he wants down. Honey, walk on up, son. Walk on. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Wow, now that's the real Laura Roberts there, not the one that went bankrupt over the city of faith. This is the real one right there. Can you imagine that? That is fantastic. Thank you, Jesus, for that healing. I pray for his hands. You are after another of the Shikimaru Almighty. But I shall not shake him out of the Shikimaru Almighty. All the way to the Shikimaru Almighty. All the way to the Shikimaru Almighty. Can you believe that? That is incredible. That happened to Jesus. He had a guy with a withered hand in the church. Remember that? And he just stretched out like that. But you notice something odd here that you don't normally see. There was an atmosphere in that church. If you look at the people that were at that church, it's not like churches. And demons sense the atmosphere. And so does the Holy Ghost. And he looks and feels the group if there's anticipation or expectation. And the demons can sense it too, and that's when they panic. Because they know they're going to get their faces completely stomped in. 
when you come to church every Sunday, your anticipation level continues to drop. Your expectation level goes down. If you go to do church too much, your faith goes down instead of up. The reason for that is you keep seeing sick people coming down to the altar and they're not healed. So you become conditioned to expect failure. This group here, if you happen to notice how the people were reacting after she got healed, they had an anticipation attitude. And the Holy Ghost picked it up and he said, hey, these people expect me to show up and show off. So therefore, I'm going to heal this girl's arm. They expect me to do it. They're not a bunch of pew squatters. <laughs> Can somebody entertain me? Where's Hillsong? Oh, wow! Okay, that crap isn't going to work. This is what works. You notice there was no music playing there. There was nobody preaching and pumping people up. There was an expectation. There was an attitude. There was a, hey, wait a minute. God's going to do something tonight. As soon as the Holy Ghost heard that, he goes, well, I got to do something tonight. Don't you see that? A casual attitude very rarely gets something from God. That should be you there. See that guy right there, that pastor? I don't think he's an international faith healer. He's just a good man of God. His church believed. He believed. Boom. Spirit of God showed up. He, is he a perfect man? No. I'm sure he's got flaws. If you followed him home, he doesn't do, you, you don't like this or that about him. He says this or that. He doesn't do that right. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody screws up. Or almost everybody. Here's you someday. Something. 
ਸਾਰੀ ਆਉ something has been done how it is to the fate Thank you Jesus. Stand up now. Let's pray. Now oh, raise your hands. Thank you Lord for my healing ministry. Thank you Jesus for my healing ministry. Come on. Thank you Lord. I've been called by God to heal the sick. I've been called by God to cast out demons. I've been called by God to heal the broken hearted. I've been called by God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. God we give you the glory and honor. Lord, I give you the glory tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God forgive me for blocking my healing. Forgive me, Lord, for getting mad at you. Forgive me for getting disgusted with myself. Forgive me for taking offenses. Father, forgive me. I'm mad at the government. I'm mad at my family. I'm mad at the state. I'm mad at this. I'm, I'm so sorry, Lord. It's blocking my healing. It's blocking my anointing. Sweet Jesus save me. Sweet Jesus save me. I come for my healing ministry tonight, Lord. I come for my miracles tonight. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. I repent of my secret sins tonight. I repent of it right now. I command these spirits to leave my body right now. I command these evil spirits to leave my body right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, I bind your power. I say that I bind your power. Thank you Jesus for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I can use at this very moment in the name of Jesus. Just put your hands on your body wherever your pain is right now. Thank you Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit. I know you're here tonight. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your body. You got bipolar? Put your hand on your forehead. You got a bad back? Put your hand back there. Ministry team, come on forward. Put your hand on your low back there. Thank you Jesus. Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your to where did we got a heart condition? Put your hand over your your heart right there. Go ahead. Now let's just repent right now. Come on. You know what you need to repent of. You saw them scriptures. I don't need this to to belabor the point. Come on. Just tell him you're sorry. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Sorry. Come out, Satan. Come on out of there, devil. There he comes. Come on out, you rotten spirit. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is one coming. Next one. Come out. Sickness and disease. Come out right now. Spirit of infirmity. Come out. Come out of my mind. My poor. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on now. Come on. Come out, Satan. Right now. <coughs> Come out. Come out, sickness. Come out of me right now. Come out in Jesus mighty name. Hurry. Come out right now. Come out right now. I already prayed. I don't need pray again. Come out right now. Come out right now. There it comes. Come out. Next one. Come out quickly. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come on out right now. Come out in Jesus mighty name. Come out. Get out of my body. Illness, come out of my head. Come out of my body right now. Come out in Jesus mighty name. Come out right now. Come on, spirit. Come out of my back right now. Come out of there right there. There he comes. Come out. Come on out quickly. Come out. Quickly, quickly come out. Go. Come out right back. Right now. Spirit of infirmity, I command you. Come out of my head right this second. Get out of my head right now. Come on, just get mad. Say it. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. 
Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. The ministry team, come on up. Come out in Jesus' mighty name right now. Get out of my body right this second. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on out of my body. Get out of there. Right now. Come out of my body right this second. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of that body right now. Quickly. Come out quickly. Go quicker. Sickness and illness. Come out. Illness and sickness. Come out. Right this second. Come out. Hurry up. Right this second. Come out. Come out of my head. I command that critical spirit in your mind to lose you right this second. <coughs> Come out right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Quickly. Leave that body. Leave my body. Leave my body right now. Hurry up. Go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of that body right now. Every joint clear. Clear out of there. Quick. Clear. Quick. Clear. Clear. Click. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing me. She just got healed. Hurry up. Come out. Sickness. I said come out now. Come on. What are you standing there doing nothing for? You saw the video. You saw the scripture. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Now. Come out now. Right now, I said. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, quickly. Get out of my body. Illness, go. Come out of my stomach right this second. Get out of that body quicker. Come out quicker. All of them. All of them. Go. Hurry up. Get out of my religious demons. Come out of my head. Church demons, come out right now. Kundalini spirits, go. <coughs> come on now. Fight. Fight it out. Push it. Do it. You have the authority to do it. You repented, right? If you repented, you've got it. You've got this thing. If you repented, you've got this thing. Satan, I hate your guts. Come out of me. Satan, I bind your power. I bind your power. Satan, I bind your power. Hurry up and come out. Come out. Food demons. Food demons. Demons that cause me to use food as a comfort. I command you to come out of my body. Come out of my stomach. Right now. Anxiety. Fear. Come out. Put your hands right where your body hurts. Put your hand right there. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Put your hands right where it hurts. Where does it hurt? Come out. Come out. The Holy Ghost is starting to move. He's starting to make his move. Come on. The Spirit of God is moving now. Come on. Fight back. Repent of it. Taking offenses. I repent of it. Taking offenses. I repent of it. I repent of it. Come on. Step out. Step out in faith. I command you, devil. I command you. Out. Sickness. I command you. Out. Come on. Sickness, come out. Taking offenses, come out. Repent of it. Repent of it. Taking offenses. Unforgiveness. Ought. Repent of it. Come on. Say it. Jesus, I'm sorry. Say it. <laughs> Say it. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, have mercy on me. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Come out of my head. Come out of my face. Every demon out of my face right now. Out of my mind. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Food demons. Obesity. High blood pressure. Diabetes. <coughs> Diabetes. Self-hatred. Diabetes. Go. Diabetes. I command you to go. Go. Kundalini. Come out. Kundalini. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Get him out of there. Get out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Get out, buddy. 
There it comes. Glory to God. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. Come out of my body. Come out of my body right now. Quickly. Quickly. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Critical nature. Criticizing others. Lust. Adultery. Lesbian. Lesbian. Homosexual. You rotten spirit. Come out. Pornography. Come out. Adultery. Come out. Right now. Come out right now. Get out. And go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of my legs. Come out of my back. Hurry up. Out. Out of my back. Out of my body. Hurry. Hurry. Taking offenses at the government. Taking offenses at Trump. Taking offenses at the Democrats. Repent of it. Repent of it right now. Repent. Taking offense at God. Getting mad at God. Being disappointed with God. Come on. Mad at your dad. Mad at your mom. Mad at your husband. Mad at your wife. Repent of it. Come on. Repent so you can get healed. Repent. Just repent. Drugs and alcohol. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of my stomach. Cancer. Cervix cancer. Come out. Uterine cancer. Come out. A broken heart. Come out. Abandonment. Rejection. Come out. Go. Now. Come out. Abandonment. Rejection. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Clear that mind. Come out of my mind, Satan. Come out of my mind. Go. Go. Out of my mind. Go. Come out of my mind. Go. Hating myself. Come out. Hating my my family. Come out. Hating my sisters, my brothers. Come out. Get out of my back right now. Go. <laughs> Get out of my back. Come out. Right now. Love you. Glad you came. Yeah. Love you. Come out. Satan, I bind your power. I command through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Word of God. I command you, come out of my hips. Come out of my hips right now. Come out of my hips. Come out of my low back right now. Satan. Come out of my back right this second. Go. Come on, just repent of it. Spiritual arrogance. Religion. Fake prophets. False apostles. Come out of there. Prophets and apostles. Come out. Prophets, apostles. Come out. Arrogance, pride, insecurity. Come out. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Step out on faith and take it. Step out on faith and take it. Step out in faith. Come on. Come on. Just get mad. Get mad. Get mad. Get angry. Not at yourself, not at God. Get angry at the devil. Get angry at your sickness. Come on. I command you by the authority of the Word of God. Get out of my head. Hurry up. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Hurry up. Come on, let's go. Be healed. 
be healed. Uh, Satan, I hate you. Get out of my head right now. Come on. Are you an introvert? Are you an introvert? Okay, just do what I tell you. Sometimes you've got to break out of introversion. Introversion is demonic. It's shy spirit. It's a shy spirit. The demons use shyness to keep you in bondage. Okay? Now, this sounds strange, but just do what I tell you. YouTubers, do everything I tell you. By faith, just start yelling. Okay, you're an introvert and you're shy. Okay, by faith, start yelling. Yell at the spirit blocking your hearing, healing. Yell at your sickness. Yell at it. You ready? I'm going to count to three. Just yell. Just yell. It's just a step of faith. You're taking a step of faith because you're shy, you're introverted, and you're fearful. You've got anxiety. I know that. In Jesus' funny name. I bind your power. I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Just yell. Come out. Right now, I said. You get out of my body, spirit. Fight back quickly. Just yell. Come out. Get out of my mind and my brain. Come out. Come. Just pray for me and my legs. There's literally over an inch difference, and my legs are like completely. My lip is like. You mean your leg grew out? Yeah. Like, oh, that's great. Oh my gosh, my lip. I just was walking. Hey, my lip is like. Go get that microphone and have him give a testimony, would you? Yeah. Look at that, Steven. I should have took a before picture. I oh shoot, Gra uh, that's in the sound room. The hand mic. That's incredible. Hey, this guy's leg grew out an inch. This guy right over here. That guy over there, he's walking around down there. His leg grew out an inch. He's not even limping anymore. Why? He repented of taking offenses. Just repent of taking offenses, you'll get healed. Come on. Stop taking offenses. Stop getting upset. Repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Brother Colin. Brother Colin's going to testify. Brother Colin. Your testimony. Oh, my gosh. I'm so blown away right now. Oh my gosh. At four, I was hit by a car. Over an inch difference. 30 some odd surgeries. So many people have prayed over me to have my limp just less substantial. And uh, my leg literally grew out tonight. Man, Jesus. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Glory. Amen. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many surgeries? Over 30. Over 30 surgeries on his leg. Just had a hip replacement. Had a hip replacement. And, uh, his I legs were at different lengths. The first time. And, they, and his right leg just grew out even with his left. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, go find another one. Go find another one to give a testimony. Who else has a testimony? Testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Satan, come out. Come out of my body right now. 
I command you to come out. Who else has got a bad back? Who has a bad back? Come up here. Anybody got a bad back? Anybody have a bad back? Come up to the front so we can pray for you. Bad back. Anybody have a shoulder disability? Come up here if you got a bad shoulder. Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. YouTubers, put your hand on your body right where your pain is and take authority over that spirit of infirmity and command you to come out. Put your hand on your groin. Command that spirit of cancer come out. Prostate cancer, uterine cancer, cervix cancer. A spirit got in your body during adultery and fornication and now you've got cervix and uterine cancer. You committed adultery, now you've got fallopian fallopian tube cancer. <laughs> Put your hand on your groin <coughs> and command the spirit of cancer to come out. Come on, repent of it. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Help me, Lord. God, help me. Thank you, Jesus. YouTubers. YouTubers, do not pray anymore. You already prayed. Command the spirits to come out of your body. Command the sickness to come out of your body. By the authority of the word of God and the blood of Jesus, I command. I command this arthritis to come out. I repent of holding grudges. I repent of bitterness. Arthritis come out of me. Rheumatoid. Scoliosis. Kyphosis. Get out of my body. I repent of bitterness. Arguing. Strife. Anger. Hatred. I repent of it. I repent of it right now. Come on. Come on. Get out. I want you out right now. All right, come forward. If you need healing, we'll pray for you up here. If you need to be healed. Come up to the altar. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Ghost power. Thank you, Jesus. YouTubers, demons were flying out of people here. If you take authority over the devil to come after him, you can drive him out. You'll drive him out. But you got to repent first. Repent, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you cannot speak in tongues, come forward. If you cannot speak in tongues, come forward so you can get your gift of your prayer language. Just come forward. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we call down the Holy Ghost tonight. 
I bind your power, Satan. Biondo Romo Shonda Ravashata. Biondo. Love you, buddy. Thank you guys for being here, Brother Mike. I am so, I am so flabbergasted right now. I'm taking this home to my post for over this. And I'm not taking this one. Woo! <laughs> 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 Kondo Romo Shandava, Yelo Shandevo. I speak to you, spirit of infirmity, spirit of insanity, spirit of lust, spirit of fear, spirit of anger. I command you to come out, Kondo Romo Shandava, Yendo Romo Shandai, Yendo Romo Shevo. Yogo Romo Shandarabe, Kelo Masero, Vokava. In the name of Jesus, get out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. The world is that. Satan, come out. Yell at the devil. Yell at him. Yomo Shandrova. Hendorombo Shike. Treat the devil rough. He treats you rough. Give it right back to him. Ondoromo Shandra Velo Vashata Velo Shatama Fight back Fight back Go in Jesus name Go I repent in the name of Jesus of being apostles and prophets I am a servant humble servant of the Lord I'll receive the full anointing of the Holy Ghost. I am a humble man and woman of God. I don't need titles. I don't need pride. I don't need recognition. Nothing. Come on, just repent of it. YouTubers, go to the website. Hit the teaching button. You need those teachings. Next Friday night, I'll be here. You've got to be here. Next Friday night, it's going to get ugly in here. Ugly on the devil. Go to the website, hit the teaching button, read the article on Satan's counterattack. You will be hit within 48 hours of this service. Read the article, How Satan Controls the Mind. How's it going? Crushed it. <laughs> Atta boy. Love you. <clears throat> Who needs to be healed? Come up here. Last call for healing. YouTubers, fight back and fight hard. Just fight back. You must learn to fight. You must learn to fight. You must fight back. You cannot be nice. Oh, I was just praising God. I was just praising God. You praise God harder and louder. Go. There go. Come out, devils, all of them. There there's more in there. Come on out. No, you're not stopping another half an hour. Go. All of them out. All of them out, I said. All of them out tonight. All of them. Go out, everybody. Hurry up. All of them out. All of them. Hurry up. All of them. Out, Satan. All of them out. All of them out. All of them out. I want all of them out. What's up, girls?